All right, the unicorn. Uh, I love your feedback slash advice on this. I recently met a very sweet, smart, and attractive lady. Uh, we've been texting back and forth for a few days, getting to know each other, and eventually got to the how many people have you slept with question. Okay, I was up front and honest and told her my number. And when it was her turn, she told me she was a virgin. That's right, she's a unicorn. I've never heard that expression. But it doesn't stop there. She went on to tell me she's never had a boyfriend. Keep in mind, she's 21. Okay. Uh, don't get me wrong. I'm old school and love that she's a virgin, especially in this world of full of hooahs. But it's still weird. Um, Jesus, no pleasing you. You just called every other woman out there, basically, who gives sex whores, and then she's weird. All right, we went on the first date a few days later, and she lived up to my expectations. She was hot, smart, funny, and I had a great time. My question is, how is it possible that this smoking hot and seemingly perfect girl is a virgin, let alone has never had a boyfriend? I'm not complaining, but I'm wondering if she's lying or if there's something that I don't see. Well, I mean, I think you're going to f- physically, you're gonna, I think you're going to, you know, unless she played softball and the ball took a weird hop, right? Uh, wait, whose story was that? Oh, my God. That just popped out of my head. That was a comic from way back when. I don't even think she does it anymore. He used to tell a story on stage about how she was playing some sport and she got hit and, and broke her hymen. Um, I don't fucking know. I, I don't know what to tell you, dude. He said, what's he saying here? I don't want to get into something with her and then find out she's a crazy or worse. Thank you for the feedback. And as always, go fuck yourself. So, dude, what? Just keep dating her and just see how it goes. If she's fucking nuts, walk away. If she is great. I mean, 21, I mean, that's a little older, but I mean, it's not like 31. You know, 26, 27, that's when you're starting to go like, you know, but someone could just be really fucking walled off, really could have had overbearing parents or whatever. Um... I don't know. She kind of really let you in and told something really intimate about herself. Um, you're, you're, you're just in a spot where you're waiting for the other shoe to drop. So if I was you, I'd be asking myself, why am I asking that? Who did I date before this that's making me think that this is going to be an absolute shit show? Now, look, I would be lying to you if I, if I said that, um, you know, if some woman was smoking hot or something like that and came up to me, I would think at some point someone would have talked her in to the rack by 21 nowadays, but 21 isn't that old. Um, I say you write it out. It's a good enough situation. See what happens. And uh, if you're worried that she's a psycho, just, you know, just don't get too fucking, uh, you know, crazy and like with the chick. And then, you know, after a while, I don't know, maybe you could actually have a conversation with her at some point. Don't be so blunt, like, how, how some fucking chick as hot as you never had a dick in her? I mean, don't say it like that. Just be like, I don't know. You know what? D- don't listen to me. Don't fucking bring that up. I, but I would continue to see her. If you're having a good time, I would continue to see her. And, um, you know, if you're really concerned, I would just hide the knives in your kitchen. The first time she stays over, you know, just make sure the bat's on your side of the bed. If you really think there's going to be a problem. But uh, that's if she even gets in the bed. So we'll see. Advice. Strip club with wife. Oh, Jesus. A hey, Bildo. Uh, that's a good one. I've heard that one before. But uh, it's always nice to bring that one back. Me and my wife and six of our friends are planning a trip to Vegas early next year. Bars, strip clubs, the whole shebang. I'm 27 and my wife is 26. We've been married for four years. I was wondering if you and Nia or past girlfriends have gone to strip clubs together, and if so, what's the etiquette? Neither me or my wife have been to a strip club before. Obviously, I wouldn't mind taking in the sights, but also don't want to be a piece of shit. Oh, God, this has fucking train wreck written all over. I know this isn't exactly something on my wife's bucket list, but I don't think she'll hate it either. She's told me in the past she appreciates the female body. Not necessarily grinding on mine, though. Um, I think she'd probably enjoy it more if I wasn't there. LOL. Would love to know what you and Nia would have to say on the subject. Thanks. Well, Nia's not here. This is what I would say. 
okay? Um, you need to stay as sober as humanly fucking possible, and you need to not indulge at all. I, what your indulgement should be is your wife enjoying the experience. That's what you do, all right? And uh, I would not get a fucking lap dance in front of my wife. I would not do that. Not that my wife, Neil wouldn't give a shit, but my wife is like ridiculously fucking cool. My wife is honestly one of the coolest females. She, she transcends her sex. The only reason why I say she's a cool female is because so many of them are fucking nightmares and they won't let you do anything. They won't let you have any fun or whatever. Like she just, you know, she, you guys hear on the podcast, she's, that's not an act. She's that fucking cool and funny, but most people, are not in that situation. So it's there's a few red flags in there. You're going with other couples. Like, let the other couples get into the fights. Because somebody's going to go too fucking far. Somebody's going to get too drunk. Somebody's going to fuck up. And somebody's going to have that fucking thing brought up for the next 10 years in their fucking marriage. Because God knows that's what the fuck they do. So all your mission that night is, is to not be that guy. Strip clubs are not going anywhere. Okay, you can always go to one another night when she's not fucking there or if she actually ends up having a good time the second time and just literally tell her, just say, listen, I wasn't going to get drunk and I wasn't going to do anything to embarrass you. Then she'll fucking respect you. So I would just say go real easy on the booze there and, uh, you know, get your wife a fucking lap dance. That's what you do. And then just say, you know, and just say you're good. You're good. You know, and when your fucking guy friends are all trying to pressure you into doing something, just tell them to go, you know, just, yeah, I'm cool, I'm cool, don't worry, I'm having a good time, okay? And let them do all the dumb shit. Let them wake up the next day when you guys go to breakfast and be the ones that have to say, yeah, sorry, I got a little crazy last night, or be the ones that are clearly just had a huge fight and are not talking during breakfast. You don't need that shit, all right? You don't need that shit. It's a very, um, all of that type of shit. There's like... When you're sitting there going, what are the rules? The rules are the rules that you and your wife come up with. And um, the fact that your wife has never been to one is just all of the fucking makings of a shit show. So like I said, I, I'm not going to read it. I'm going to say this again because you're a young guy. Do not be the drunk guy. And I'm telling you, just make sure she has a good time. Ask her if she's all right. Ask her if this is cool, if she wants to get out of there. Just totally be attentive to her, and there's no way it can be a fucking problem. And then you can get on with your goddamn life, and then fucking whatever. Some other time, you go to a titty bar, maybe you bring her along. You know, she might fucking end up wanting to see you get a fucking lap dance. You're like, you serious? Yeah. And then she'll be like, all right, which one do you want? You know, and then that's another thing that could be a fight. You know what I mean? You fucking pick some, you know, I don't, I don't, that's just one of those, it's just, it's just one of those things. I remember one time, um, there's this famous, um, strip club in Los Angeles called Jumbo's Clown Room. Okay. And it is just as creepy and disgusting as it sound. I don't think it's like that anymore. It, it's, it's way better now. But back in the day, it was literally like, you know, if I was a serial killer, like that would be my Starbucks. You know what I mean? Sit there with my laptop in a chat room with other serial killers. I mean, it was a fucking disgusting place. So I had been there uh, maybe three times over the course of 20 years going out to uh, L.A. And it was always just a shady, shifty fucking place. So one time um, I was out with Nia and she brought up that she wanted to go to this fucking place. And I was just like, are you serious? You want to go to that place? I don't want to go to that place. I go to that place. Is, it's not a cool place. Right up. So she goes, come on, let's just go. So all right, let's fuck it. Let's go. It's her fucking idea. So we ended up going there. And I sat over in the corner. I didn't get a lap dance or anything like that. But I think I've told this story before. I literally saw a stripper quit on stage that night. It was fucking amazing. Um, we walked in and there was like one guy sitting up near the stage and there was like three other people up at the bar with their backs to the stage. So 
this woman comes out looking a little rough, you know, and uh, she starts doing a thing. She dances to one song. The song ends. Nobody claps. Okay. The guy who was sitting up near the stage was not there anymore. So now it, it kind of becomes like a philosophical, philosophical question. Like basically, if I'm in a strip club dancing, but nobody's watching me, am I technically still in show business, right? So basically what happened was, you know, no one was fucking paying attention. So she ends the first song, you know, you know, because I'm wanted, dead or alive. She slowly slides down the pole. And then the next song starts and she's just laying there. And she's not dancing. She's not doing anything. And I'm going like, oh, my God. This is like watching a boxer, like, not answer the bell, right? And just quitting on the stool. And she just rolled over. And somehow she had her cell phone. And she just started checking, like, her fucking emails. And at that point, like, this one of the barback ladies walked by, saw it, and laughed and said, that's awesome. And she just laid there for the rest of the song and didn't dance and gathered her shit, didn't take up any more of her clothes. And that's like she quit being a stripper. She just quit dancing for the night. And uh, I thought it was fucking awesome. Yeah, I just as a performer, I respected it. You know what I mean? It's like if you're a comedian, I'm doing my act and no one's listening, no one's paying attention. I'm just going to stop and I'm going to shit on the crowd. That's it. I'm not going to waste my time doing my material. So why should she take her bottoms off and show everybody the fucking world if they're not even going to look at it? Right? Um, so there you go. There's my fucking stripper story. But me and Nia never had a problem. I think I want to say I've gone to a couple. Have I been to a couple? Maybe one other with her. Um, I got to tell you, it's not fun. It's not fun to, to go to a titty bar with your wife. Or even with other women. It's just like everything. I used to do a bit in my act about that. Like when women started going to titty bars, they would always go like, you know, at some point they always say, this isn't as, this isn't as bad as I thought it was. I think this isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. And the joke of my act was, yeah, because you're here. Leave and it'll get evil again. Um, That's one of the worst things ever that happened, that women started going to titty bars. You know what I mean? It's like, can't you just go to a fucking male one? Can't you go to the fucking Chippendales one and have some fucking goddamn dick swinging in your face? If you're a lesbian, then yeah, come on in. Have a good time, right? It's just like they just constantly, they just constantly have to be around us. It's fucking unbelievable. They think we're stupid. They think we do dumb shit, but they just can't get enough of doing every dumb fucking thing that we do. All right. Um, Ex-wife wants me to adopt ex's son. Hey there, Bill Burlington Cunt Factory. I usually laugh at some of the poor schmucks who write into into you asking the advice. Today, I'm that schmuck. I won't go into every little detail about this in hopes you can give me some advice. A few years ago, I married my soon-to-be ex-wife. Dude, I was so fucking thinking about that woman ruining your apartment and how they can just get away with that. Let me, let me, I wasn't even paying attention. Read this again. Today I'm the smuck. Okay, I, I won't go into every detail. All right. A few years ago, I married my soon-to-be ex-wife. Along with the marriage came her two-year-old son. His biological father is a deadbeat who didn't hold down a job and avoids child support. He has never had any contact with the son. Wow. All right. So I did the most manly thing that one can do besides going to community college. I put on my big boy pants and I took her son in as my own. He calls me dad and whatnot. We bonded. I really care for the kid. The first few years of marriage of my wife were great, which ended up leading us to having our very own daughter. And then my wife turned into a whore. Oh, God, what happened? Uh, So we're going through the divorce, and I still pick both kids up, even though I'm legally responsible for one. I carry her and her son on my insurance to this day, maybe against my better judgment. But I'd like to give her some time to get her shit together until I drop her off Drop her off of it? Complete? Drop her out of it, I think you've been sick. Completely. Well, the finalization of the divorce papers is in August. The soon-to-be ex-mother-in-law keeps insisting that I legally adopt her grandson. No, don't do that. Now, here's the thing. 
I send a very gracious amount in support payments biweekly. Um, we choose to not go through the court system because my ex sees that I'm a good father and still take responsibility of her son. Keep it like that. I flat out said, no, I'm not legally adopting him. Yeah, your fucking mother-in-law does not want you to legally adopt him because she thinks you're a good father. Okay, she's looking at you like an ATM machine, like a lot of women do with men, which, once again, you can't fucking say that, despite the 10 million fucking examples of it. It's considered sexist. All right, one wrong move, and now the court system has me by the balls for support for two legal uh, children. What? What happened? Uh, yeah, yes, yeah, it flat out. Yeah, he said flat out no because one wrong move and now the court system has me legally by the balls for the sport of two children. Yeah, there's no fucking reason for you to do that. They don't hold anything over you. They have no negotiating, nothing. Uh, the mother in law is insisting, unless they try to keep your daughter from you. The mother in law is insisting that if I don't legally adopt him, I'm a scumbag who doesn't deserve to see him. And Eve has gone so far in so many words to say I won't be seeing him. She's even getting my ex on board with this. Like I said, I really care for the kid. He's a good kid who never had a father figure until I came into his life six years ago. What's my play here? Thanks and go fuck yourself. Uh, what you're seeing with these two fucking lunatics, um, generation fucking psychos here, uh, is the tip of the fucking iceberg with these people. Okay. They don't give a shit about you. They're looking at you like an ATM machine, and they're already fucking with you. They don't, they don't have that kid's best interest in mind. They think they do. They don't. They're using him as a fucking negotiating tool. All right? I'm surprised they haven't said, well, we'll fucking go for full custody with your daughter and try to fuck with that. That'll probably be their next fucking move. And here's the thing with them. Okay? With them, it's, the more you're in their lives, the worse it's going to get. Do not legally bind yourself to them whatsoever. And this is what I would do. Do not get emotional at all. Do not get into a fuck you, fuck you fight with the mother-in-law. Do not get into a fuck you, fuck you fight with um, your soon-to-be ex-wife. You have leverage in that your ex-wife, as much as she's you know going to divorce you here, still cares about you. You guys still had a a child together. And you just have to just talk to her logically and just say, I'm not comfortable doing that, um, but I'm going to continue to make payments and support and all that and help you out with your son and obviously our daughter. All right? Um, And this pressure that your your mother-in-law is putting on this is only going to make both of our lives miserable. So what you do is you, you, you divide and conquer there. Just say, I have no problem with you, and the way that we get along, I don't think your mother-in-law understands, and that's why she's applying this pressure. But that pressure, is it's going to be bad for us, and it's going to be bad for our kids. Let's just continue going on like this. I love your son, and you know I'm going to continue to support him. That's as far as it goes, all right? And I'm totally comfortable with supporting him. I'm giving you my word, but I'm not, you know, I'm not doing the legal thing. I'm not doing it. And you just, that's it. That's it. And if they want to keep coming at you, I'm telling you right now, if you, do you think that if, when you legally adopt that kid, do you honestly fucking think that that's going to be the end of the demands? What the fuck is the mother-in-law involved in this shit for anyways? Right there, that's a nightmare. That's a fucking nightmare situation and so many married women have that fucking that ridiculously close relationship with their mom you know what i mean and it, it to the point that it hurts the fucking relationship and god forbid is it, it as of a guy you keep bringing your mom into the fucking relationship with your wife that's 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 a fucking rap it's a fucking rap but once again guys put up with that shit we put up with that shit we put up with them coming in busting up our shit dude you hold all of the fucking cards here that's it. They don't, ha- they, don't have, they don't have a dime. They, they're not even in the fucking game. You hold all the fucking cards. Do not do this. You don't have to do this. Just stay calm and keep reassuring your, your soon-to-be ex-wife that, you know, you're doing what's best for the kids and what's best for you and what's best for both of you guys. 
and just keep saying uh, this pressure that your mother-in-law is putting on us is unnecessarily unnecessary. It's 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 just we're good, okay. I'm still like if I was going to be vindictive, it would have happened by now. I'm still picking both of them up. All right. There's no way I'm going to let anything happen to your son. And there's no way I'm letting anything happen to our daughter. That's it. That's it. So tell your fucking mother to shut the fuck. I can't do that part. Don't do that part. All right. All right. Read this. Okay. All right. I'm going to read this. Relax. Uh, What's up, dickhead? Let's go fucking Bruins. Can't wait for next season. I just moved to wildly mediocre Los Angeles. Uh, Well, yeah, that's what you're going to feel like because you just fucking moved there. Um, But if you stay open-minded, which is really difficult for East Coast people to do. I I did that the first time I came to L.A. I went to L.A. and I tried to do Boston, New York shit. And then when I couldn't, I was like, oh, this place fucking sucks. It doesn't. It's fucking amazing. Amazing. Beautiful women, some of the best food you're ever going to have. So much outdoor activity. Just fucking embrace it. Stop trying to be the fucking Boston guy. You're not on a reality show, all right? Take it down a few fucking notches. Nobody gives a fuck in Los Angeles that you don't like it. Everybody just thinks, well, then go back to fucking Boston. Go back to Philly, wherever the fuck you're from. If it's so fucking great, why did you accept a job out here? All right, sorry. I'm just heading you off at the pass before you come another cunt shitting on fucking L.A., um, he said, I work for the UFC editing fight highlights. Uh, thanks for keeping me entertained with your semi-literate bibble babble bullshit day after day. This is like a classic East Coast guy. He really likes me and likes what I, what I do, but he just can't get himself to say it because his dad never hugged him. So I'm not taking any of this personally. Anyways, my girlfriend is about to move here to meet me. Uh, she had to stay behind when I moved because she's a teacher and needed to finish out the school year. Uh, we get along great. I trust her and she treats me better than I deserve. However, sometimes I can't take how ditzy she can be. Uh-oh. Uh, I'm starting to pull some threads here. She is successful and very book smart, but sometimes lacks common sense. I find myself feeling embarrassed when she says some stupid shit in front of my friends or parents. It's kind of a hard thing to discuss with her, though, you know? What, should, what the fuck should I do? Also, <clears throat> I'm coming to your show at the Saban Theater this Monday. I'm looking forward to it, so don't blow it. Well, I appreciate you coming out to that. Like I said, it was, you know, for a really good friend of mine and for a great cause. Uh, so thank you for doing that. All right. Well, here's the deal, dude. You either have to accept the fact that she can be a little ditzy or you have to come to the realization that you're dating a fucking dope and you got to get rid of her. It's one or the other. Um... I mean, look, she doesn't sound like she's 100% that. I, I've dated people like that that were a little, you know, they were either locked in or just sort of floating. It was really weird. And they could say really, like, amazing, like, spot-on shit. And then two minutes later could just could say something like, oh, my God, what the fuck was that? Um, but I have to tell you, that's kind, of a, that's kind of a big deal, though, dude. You know, you can't think that the person you're dating is a dope you know, you get into that situation and, uh, I don't know, you start thinking about getting married, you start thinking about having kids, you're like, is my kid going to be half a dope or a full-on dope? Is, is the kid going to get all of that DNA from her? Who the fuck knows? Um, no, it's kind of hard to thing to discuss with her, you know? But what are you going to say to her? Can you stop saying dumb shit? I mean, there's, there's no way to do that, you know? trying to think that's like my wife telling me to 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 work on my i mean i do work on my temper but i mean it's kind of how i'm made up i mean if somebody's ditzy they're fucking ditzy that would be like my wife telling me okay can you be a little less pasty it's like i I can become red for a few days (laughs) that's that's about the best i can do i don't know what else you want from me but uh you know i think you uh need to maybe move on i'm not saying you need to move on yeah you either accept this about her or you got you got to walk One or the other. Wind it down. Wind it down. All right. Heroin. Um, I have no family, no friends. I work and support myself. I have no kids, no relationship. I actually enjoy freedom and being alone to an extent. I'm in my 20s. I had a lot of sex relationships and ended up getting herpes slash HPV. I would basically rather just not tell people and not have relationships than to have than to have to at 35 years old. Uh, then they have to, at 35 years old, deal with having to explain slash tell this to women. I really like heroin. 
Oh, what the fuck? Jesus Christ, buddy. What are, you, what are we doing here? This, this doesn't sound real. I really like heroin. I go to work, come home, and use heroin on a daily basis. I still pay my bills. I still work. But I have traded the pleasure of sex slash having a family slash relationships for that of watching TV shows slash movies while high on heroin, falling asleep, then going to work the next day. Should I change this? Is this real? I, I'll try. You know what? I'll, I'll treat it as real. Um, should I listen to society, stop using, go out there and find women and tell them about my situation and hope they do not reject me and get clean? Or if I am happy, is it okay for me to just accept the women part of my life is over, eat whatever I want, use whatever drug I want, and fill the time I have left on this planet watching shows, movies, playing games, and resigning myself to the fact that I will be alone? Love the podcast. Heroin gets a bad rap. It may sound crazy, but people can use opiates and still be responsible. I know many people who do. It's like alcohol. Both can be physically... This is really fascinating. Um, uh, or maybe it's a big lie. I don't know. It's, alcohol, uh, it's like alcohol. Both can be physically addictive. Alcohol can actually kill you with withdrawals while heroin cannot. And the deaths you hear about heroin are from idiots overdosing. Um, if we, well, what if you get a bad batch? Isn't that something, you know, it's too fucking strong. Um, I don't know. I don't pretend to know. All right. If we reported all the deaths from alcohol involved incidents, they are easy. Well, they do report all of them. As far as I know, it's not like they're trying to hide them. Um, they are easily 100 times more than heroin related deaths. But in our society right now, opiates are not acceptable because too many white middle class parents are finding their idiot kids using them without understanding tolerance slash uh, proper dosing. Anyways, love the podcast. I'm not leaving any contact info, so I have no way to know if you read this. Just thought it might be an interesting subject for your show. It is interesting. Um, yeah, dude, I don't pretend to know anything about opiates. All I do know is that they... Um, I know alcohol can ruin your life, but I don't think it's nearly as addicting... As heroin, I have heard that people can fucking, I don't know. But I think, I think if, if, the, if what you're saying is true, I think you're a rare person that can handle that. I have no idea. Ah, fuck, now I got to look some shit up. The last thing I wanted to do, and I got to get going here. I got my fucking show here in a half hour. Um, oh, the live reads are here. The live reads are here. I guess I'll read them here then. Let me just see something. Um, let me just look up. What do I look up? productive while on heroin <laughs> heroin and employment independent drug mar let's see productivity and heroin addiction what is this how heroin addicts in Vietnam what is this productivity and heroin addiction how living in a cave turned me into a blogger I failed my New Year's resolution. I wish I could do better. I just don't have enough willpower. Have you ever set a goal you didn't achieve? Ever tried a New Year's resolution that didn't stick? What separates the 0.5% from the 99.5%? What makes someone, some people succeed in building new sustainable habits, but almost everyone else fails? How living in a cave term, where the fuck's the heroin shit? How heroin addicts in Vietnam and your productivity habits are the same. What? Everyone knows the horrible effects of heroin and addiction. Once someone starts taking heroin, it's almost impossible to quit, and those who form a recurring habit will likely never quit. So why didn't heroin using Vietnam vets relapse when they returned to the USA? A study from the Washington School of Medical Medicine, very few heroin using Vietnam a veteran relapses. Uh, what? Very few heroin using veteran relapsed, or uh, relapsed when they returned to the USA. And those who did were more likely to have been illicit drug users before ever arriving in Vietnam. These vets weren't addicted to the chemicals and heroin. They were addicted to the experience of heroin in a specific situational context. In the same vein, you think you are in control of what you do. You think that when you fail, it's a failure of your willpower. But the fact is, you don't even realize the influence of the environment has on you. Did you know that obesity spreads through a network of friends? Happiness also spreads throughout a social network. Your situation determines your choices as much as or more than your own personal choices when willpower. 
So how can I use this to improve my habit? Oh, Jesus Christ. No, join a volleyball league. I don't even know what the fuck that was. All right, let me, let me look up. Uh, let me just read these fucking things here. Um, you know what? I might read up on that. I probably won't. I'll try to... F- I would never tell people to fucking... You know, hey, it's just heroin. You know, that seems a little crazy to me. Um, and people are always coming in alcohol. It's like the fucking pot smokers always doing that shit. Well, the alcohol, actually, man, there's no medicinal purposes to fucking... I, I get it. I get it. But, you know... You guys are also, you know, you're pie in the sky fucking thing with weed. Like it's like this, that you can't get addicted to weed is another fucking thing. Jesus Christ. Okay. Yeah. You just really like it. That's all, you know, I like a fucking receptionist and you know, I I might be old school. I might be sexiest, sexiest, sexy, sexist. That's what I'm trying to say. I, I like a reception, the hoarier, the better, as long as they get the job done. It's nothing better when you walked in, right? And there was some fucking, you know, chick walking around with fucking fuck me pumps on. You know, she looks good. And all these goddamn feminists out there that sit there and they flip out and they act like every fucking beautiful woman out there would be a chemist if it wasn't for men like me. You know, some of them, they're putting their best foot forward. Jesus Christ. What do you think we have remote controls for? Because no one wants to get up off the couch. And God damn it, if a woman is born beautiful and all she's got to do is walk around with her ass jacked up and her tits jiggling around a fucking office, and next thing you know, she's got a beautiful home to go home to, right? Because some rich guy goes in there going, well, you know what? I'd like to stick my billionaire dick between those tits. Hey, well, what's wrong with that? And then meanwhile, some fucking, you know, half a leprechaun jerk off like me can come in and I got something to look look at while I'm waiting for the fucking doctor to finally come in and figure out what's wrong with my spinal cord. What is wrong with that? What is wrong with that, you homely fucking haters of beautiful women? God bless them. God bless them for just showing up and looking good. You know, giving you something to rub one out to. You know, everything serves a purpose in life. Like right now. If you're some broad and you're listening to me, I'm probably motivating you to go write some paper, maybe in Portland. You know? We all serve a fucking purpose. Can't we just let the whores be whores? You know, there's a reason the word exists. All right? And I, you know, I guess because men are running shit that sometimes there's, there's fewer options. But give me a fucking break. You know what I mean? It would be great if everything was li- like even. You know what I mean? Everything was just fair and the best got the fucking job, right? But that's never going to happen because we're human beings. And that includes those feminists who don't want it equal. They just want it better for them, right? That's why they're only talking about women. They're not talking about the poor kids that sew together their bed sheets unless they go to Bowling Branch. Oh, look at that little callback to the advertising, right? Let's just say it was free, not free. Let's just say everything was fucking even. Are you really going to tell me that there wouldn't still be that chick running around just fucking blowing people because she enjoys it? Why can't she just, you know, why can't she have a good time without you judging her? Huh? You homely hater of a cock gobbler. Huh? <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, by the way, can we talk about that lady? The fucking lady. There's a woman out there. Um, she fucking was married to a guy who was a billionaire. She's getting a divorce. The guy wrote her a check just under a billion dollars and she turned it down. Now I know what a lot of people are thinking. What a fucking gold digging whore. This is right up Bill's alley. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to tweet a fucking link to this article and this will get him going on the podcast and then he'll have a shit fit and I'll laugh as I'm sitting in my cubicle. Well, Surprise, surprise. I'm not really having a shit fit about this because I don't think it's about the money. This is the deal. This broad. All right. This fucking twinkle toes here. All right. All little fucking sugar tits here. She married this guy. This guy was worth 50 million bucks. He was an oil man. Get off my fucking property. There ain't no global warming. Good. I like that there's a hole in the ozone layer. Makes me feel like I'm closer to God. Right? He's an oil man. Hey, I'll tell you what, Mr. President, 
I don't even know why I have to call you, Mr. President. I fucking put you in office with my goddamn money. Look at me when I'm talking to you, Obama. All right? My granddaddy put that dictator in fucking power. And he was supposed to give us our little gold little shit there, right? He's supposed to give us our liquid gold, right? He ain't doing it no more. You got to go over there. You got to take that fucker out. You understand me? I don't give a fuck how you do it. He's an oil man. It's a fucking oil man. All right? He's got Slim Whitman on Laserdisc. Right? That's Irish. What was the fucking Slim Whitman? He sold over 9 million records. Um, anyways, I'm all over the fucking map here. See? I'm back to me. I'm not looking at the TV anymore. Um, so this fucking guy, he's got, he's got a $50 million business. This, he already has this, and this woman does not sign a fucking... He doesn't sign a prenup with the woman. According to her, she didn't take the billion-dollar payout because now 26, 27, 28 fucking years later, they're going for a divorce. This guy's company is worth $20 billion, according to her. All right? Now, here's the thing. She's like, I was with this guy, and I supported him, and I held down the fucking home front and all that. That's got to be worth something. This was fucking crazy to me. It's like, you know, with all due respect, sweetheart... This guy made fifty million without you. Okay. Look, I could see if the guy had a couple hundred grand in the bank. All right, maybe. All right, whatever. You know what I mean? If you make fifty million dollars, give me a fucking break. If you started out with nothing and you're worth fifty million dollars, you fucking you know what you're doing. At that point, once you have fifty million dollars, that's that's when that's when you got your own. You're starting to have your own plane. You're in a gated community. You got your own security system. You know, you fucking kill somebody and the cops go down to your house and they're talking to your lawyer in the driveway as you're sitting there eating fucking escargot and an English muffin. And they're asking your fucking lawyer if you if you wouldn't mind turning yourself in over the next six, seven days. You're like that level fucking rich. And once you're that level rich, it's, it's all fucking downhill. You're meeting the people that are running the world. You're meeting the people in the Bilderberg group. You're meeting the people in the other groups that I don't know about or what the fuck they talk about, but I pretend like I do. You're at that level of fucking wealth. All right? So this fucking guy grows it to $20 billion, and she gets a check for a billion, basically. And uh, she says she doesn't want it. She wants more. So everybody's saying that she's a gold-digging whore. You know what I really think it is? And she's saying that she supported him and helped him build. Say, go fuck yourself. All right? Let's, let's just say, for whatever fucking reason, I met an unknown Lady Gaga in the East Village 10, 12 fucking years ago. Right? And she's down there ripping off Madonna songs or whatever. And I'm like, you know what? There's something about her, though. You know, she's got nice legs. She's got a nice ass. I mean, I like the imperfections. I like the giant nose. Look at me. I got red fucking hair. It's falling out. I think we can make a good couple. You know? We're both a mess. Two negatives make a positive. We'll make a beautiful baby. So I start fucking hanging out with her. Next thing you know, we fall in love. Garrett Blunt! Go, motherfucker! Um, so then we think, uh, all right. You know, we get married. Okay? And let's just say what I, whatever I'm doing. I'm fucking... I make keys. That's what I do. That's my job. Okay? And she's out down there. She's down the village. And she's fucking, you know, she's making her own meat dress. You know? She's going out, she's making money in a coffee house, and she goes right to the deli and she buys more meat. She's investing in herself. She's building her career. She's playing the fucking piano. She's coming home and she's like, what do you think of this? And I'm like, it sounds good, honey. Right, I'm over there, I'm knitting a fucking sweater. You know, I got a pot roast in the goddamn oven or whatever. Okay, and then she becomes Lady Gaga. I get to quit my fucking job. I'm Mr. Gaga. I get to go on Oprah and sit there silently, you know. As Oprah talks to Lady for fucking an hour, and then finally she says, well, what, what do you see at her? And then I already have some pre-written speech about how I'm Gaga about Gaga. I'm Gaga for Gaga, whatever the fuck happens, right? And let's just say in the end of all of that, I'm walking down the fucking hall blinded by her gold records, platinum records and all that shit. Every morning when I go to brush my teeth, I got to fucking, I got to put on my, uh, my amber visions just to get there so I don't fucking walk into the walk-in closet instead of the bathroom. Let's say at the end of that, she gets sick of me and she kicks me to the fucking curb. All right? Now, let's say she's worth $100 million 
And she turns around and says, I'm going to give you, Bill, I'm going to write you a check. Let's do the same thing. Let's just say 20 billion. Just say she's worth 20 million. And she says, Bill, I'm going to give you a million dollars. And you know what I'm going to say? I'm going to say, thank you, Lady Gaga. It was awesome. I, enjoy, I was just making keys. I wasn't going to make a million dollars in my lifetime. All right. I'm going to take this money and uh, I'm going to pay my taxes on it. I'm going to get myself a little fucking house, you know, and I'm going to make keys in the back of it. I'm going to get my life back and I'm going to find I God knows you gave me plenty of fuck. And I would buy, you know what I would do with that? I would go buy a fuck. Everybody needs keys. Touchdown Patriots. Who the fuck was that? Who just scored that? Nate Solder just scored his, his first touchdown ever. Nice, 23-7. Oh, did we match up better against the Packers? So anyway, oh, look at our, look at two cheaters talking there. <laughs> On the sidelines. Two convicted cheaters. That was a nice play. That was a nice play. How did you like the video? I love the video. Um, anyways, you got to have a sense of humor about your own fucking team, don't you? Most people don't, but I do. Um, anyways. So let's go back here. Uh, yeah, if she gave me a million bucks, what I would do is I would find a house that cost like, I don't know, like 150 grand, you know, and I would put down a ridiculous amount of money on it. And then I put the rest of the money away and I would start cutting keys again out of the back of my house. And I get that business going and I would fucking build it up. And then I'd go on to, uh, instead of farmersonly.com, I'd go on like uh, keymakersonly.com and I'd try to meet somebody else. That's what the fuck I would do. I would never try to take her money. I'd be like, you know what? I know I gave you support. I know I said that was a beautiful song. I know you wrote a couple songs about us. Instead of Dear Ben, you wrote Dear Bill. I get it. But I can't sing. I can't play a fucking piano. Who's kidding who? We both know why I lived the life I lived for the last 10 years. It was because of you, Lady Gaga. And to think I got to live that life and in the end of it, you're going to give me a million bucks to leave? Yeah, you're a fucking saint. I still love you, Lady Gaga, even though you don't love me anymore. I get it. I don't even know why you love me in the first place, but God bless you. That's probably why you write such wonderful songs. That connects with an entire demographic of people. Continued success. Thank you for that million dollars. And I would fucking leave. All right. I got too much fucking pride to sit there if somebody doesn't fucking want me. To then try to take everything they got. I mean, just I, I couldn't fuck. I, the second somebody doesn't want me around, I'm like, all right, Jesus, I didn't know I was annoying you. I get it. Sorry. Can I uh, grab my things now? Do you want to want me to send somebody else? I, I would just get the fuck out of there. Um, so anyway, so that seems to be, you know, this lady here that she she got a billion dollars um, and she says it's not enough. What I honestly think it is, I just think it's an emotional thing for this woman. I don't think it's a money thing because you can't spend that. You can't spend all that fucking money. Right. Did you guys, they actually showed a copy of the uh, of the check that this dude wrote to his ex-wife. He didn't write it on one of those business checks, you know, that are sort of extra long and the whole extra area, the memo section that you write stuff. He wrote it on like a personal little check, like the same kind of check like, you know, somebody living week to week, the, one of those little checkbooks. He wrote a check for like $989,899,031, whatever the fuck it was. And I think what he did was this guy's obvious. I don't know what the fuck. Maybe he's just good at business. I think he just sat down after they decided on the number. And I bet he did it right in front of her. After 26 fucking years. Okay. He's walking away. He's leaving. And he just sits down. And he's just writing money just to make her leave. And he just sits down and goes scribble, scribble, scribble. Sign, 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 dot the I, cross the fucking T, tears it out. Here you go. Beat it, lady. I just think it came across like that, and it 
fucking pisses her off. <laughs> and she's just like, this is the thing. Uh, the worst thing you can have when a woman's breaking up with you or if you're breaking up with a woman is if she's not over you. If she's over you, it's going to go smoothly. You don't have to deal with her fucking, you know, putting a, your, your pet rabbit in a goddamn stew. All right. But if they're not over you, you got to fucking let them down easy. You can't just push them down the emotional elevator shaft. All right. You're going to have a major fucking problem. And I think this guy, he just fucking fired off the check like he was paying another bill. And I, she just was insulted by that. And she's think doing the math in her head like, you know, this motherfucker is going to. I actually talked a little bit about this on the Chris Layton podcast. So I forgive me if there's a little bit of overlap, but I just wanted to hear what he thought about it. Um, I think that. Uh, I, I don't know. I just think that they, they want you. They want you to hurt. They just want you to hurt. I don't know what it is. Not all of them, just some of them. And I think that she didn't get a satis enough of a satisfied, hurt look on this guy's face. There wasn't enough pain. I think he just treated her like he had to get the gutters fixed and had some professional come over and did it. And he just fired off this fucking check and it just pissed her off. You know, because she's more than taken care of for the rest of her fucking life. Anything she could ever want, she's, it's all good. But I think the fact that he still has so much more money and it didn't hurt him to write that check. That and she knows that he has enough money to get like, you know, I mean, you got 20 billion dollars. There's like a Victoria's Secret model that will pretend to give a fuck about you for a good year, year and a half. And you can do that for the rest of your life as you ride around in Ferraris. Now, her, she's a woman. Guys don't work that way. We don't really give a shit about money. You know, we're more like enamored. By looks, you know, it's both of our fucking weaknesses, whatever. You guys are into stuff. We're into fucking, uh, you know, tits and ass. So, which is why, you know, we will date somebody as dumb as a fucking rock. And you will also date some ugly old balding douche, you know, because they can take care of you. It's, it's kind of what we do. So I'm not really, a lot of people wanted me to go off on her like she's a gold digging whore. I don't think she is. I think she's, uh, I think she's hurt. And uh, she's hurt how easy this guy is just getting over. I know all you guys are sitting there going like, dude, what the fuck? He's writing her a check for a billion dollars. I know that hurts. Dude, you got $20 billion. Come on, man. If that's true. If it's true and you got $20 billion, <laughs> yeah, I'll write you a fucking check for, for a bill. That wouldn't hurt me at all. There you go. Bing, bang, boom. Beat it. Whistling Dixie. Jesus Christ, the fucking interest alone on that money. You, you, by the time you walk down the driveway... Or she walks down the driveway leaving you. Your money is probably already made fucking $30 million. What the fuck do you care? Um, I know he's probably, that's obviously not $20 billion liquid. He's got a lot of that tied up in derricks, right? Some giant fucking ranches, some oil rags, some trucks. Bill, I fucked up and could use a hand. All right, let's see. Why did you fuck up? Hey, you old biscuit bacon bitch. Uh, I fucked this one up and could use some of your broadcasted advice. I'm a 26-year-old guy living and working in the great white north, Toronto to be exact, and I love your podcast and all that shit. Thank you. Anyways, a few months ago, I started seeing this really sweet girl. She's pretty, she's thoughtful, and she's as low maintenance as a 1991 Honda Civic. Okay. It sounds like the beginning of a horror movie. Everything's like fucking perfect, right? And he literally says, perfect, exclamation point. She deserves to be treated right. About a month ago, I was eating in a restaurant with a buddy when this smoking hot redhead comes up to me out of the blue and says, hey, you're cute. Take my number. Let's go out sometime. I should have said no. I have a girlfriend right then and there, but the excitement of having a babe throw herself at me was too much for me to pass up. Absolutely, fucking Luli it was. That's like a fucking movie. We're not wired to pass that moment up. I'm not saying you go and do it, but Jesus. Uh, he said, I didn't have the damn strength to keep it in my pants. Later that night, after a few wobbly pops, I texted her looking to meet up. We did, and we did the deed. I felt like a piece of shit. Yeah, uh, yes. We've all been there. As men, we've all been there. And a lot of ladies, too. 
which never gets any press because it's considered sexist to suggest that. Um, here's where it's getting interesting and slightly complicated. Not even 48 hours later, I'm hanging out with my girlfriend when she gets a call from one of her friends saying, I have some bad news to tell you. Oh, boy. I overheard the conversation coming from my girlfriend's phone and knowing exactly what the bad news was, I snatched the phone from her and proceeded to spill my guts and told her the whole story. Well, there you go. At least you manned it up. Evidently, the friend that called was roommates with the redhead and the redhead through social media had hunted me down and shown my picture to her roommates. Dude, you can't, you can't get away with anything anymore. Look at this. The friend goes on to tell the redhead that I have a girlfriend. Oh, dude, this is what, this is like, you're going to end up with nothing here. My girlfriend obviously was super upset, but being the sweetheart she is. And after many, many, I'm so sorry from me. She agreed to let me ma- try to make it up to her. Um, how do cheaters do this shit? I didn't even last 48 hours. Cut to two weeks later. Myself and three of my buddies since kindergarten are on a mountaineering expedition in Peru. Dude, what are you, fucking Jason Bourne? What's going on here? Hot chicks throwing themselves at you. Now you're in fucking Peru. Uh, A trip we planned since February. And I get this panic-stricken email from my girlfriend saying she, parentheses, the redhead, had broken into my apartment and trashed the place. See attached photos. Dude, what the fuck? Women are fucking crazy. Let's just say, let's just say this, okay? Like, how is she hurt? She came walking up to you, threw her fucking clam at you. You fucking took it. Who? You're not in a relationship with her. My voice is literally cracking. You're not in a relationship. You're not in a fucking relationship with her, dude. You need to prosecute this fucking woman. This has to stop this whole fucking thing that when women get upset, they can destroy property. Let a guy go out and fucking trash some woman's car after she fucks around on him. He'll end up in jail and have to pay for the fucking car. Everything was smashed. My TV, one of my guitars. She cut up my bed sheets and the duvet. She even went so far as to throw all my towels in the bathtub and ran the water. How do I know it was the redhead? The dumb bitch left a note next to the TV saying cheaters never win or some bullshit like that. Give me a fucking break. She even bragged about the whole ordeal to her affirmation roommate classic guy he just writes sheesh my girlfriend called my girlfriend called the cops and upon my return from peru i set up a restraining order against the redhead you should fucking charge you should you should sue her here's the problem all this drama has led to my girlfriend reconsidering her willingness to give me a second chance dude here's the real thing anytime some fucking smoking hot girl just comes up to you and throws it at you 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 know it's a head case um Go with a fake name. Um, I, f- <laughs> I feel real bad about the whole situation and want to make it work between us. But there's this little voice in my head that says, let her break up with you and start fresh. I'm pretty confused. I was going to say that. Just start over again, dude. You're 26. What are you going to, you know, you got a dick. This is going to happen. All right. So he goes, I fucked up initially, but forgiveness then got fucked with and the forgiveness was retracted. Anyways, I hope your your sage advice is half as good as those fucking pies you make. Thanks a lot. and Go fuck yourself. Yeah, dude, you know what you got to do? You got to walk and you got to have this crazy redheaded bitch pay for your shit. All right. Jesus Christ. She takes no responsibility in that, just walking around, throwing a fucking pussy at everybody. I mean, what the fuck you think's going to happen? It's, you know, as a guy, you can walk around throwing your dick at fucking people for, for years and not get anything. This is why there's the double standard. You know, if a guy does it, he's a stud because he has to convince people. Just the way we're set it, it's, just, it's the way we're set up. Okay, women are no better than guys. It's what it is, is the way they're set up anatomically is they're letting someone enter their body. That is a major decision. Sticking your dick in something, it's, you know, (laughs) it's fine. It's like, you know, it's like putting cereal back in the cabinet. I mean, you don't even fucking think about it. Um, I probably, you know, there's probably ignorance in there. Uh, Yeah, I would just say, like, you know what? You're right. I fucked up. 
That's a really big pet peeve of mine that fucking women get to do shit like that. They just get to walk around, destroy your shit. Just fucked up your TV and all that, dude. And you just, and your whole thing is just like, sheesh. Like, we're like, we like, we're just conditioned to be like, all right, well, that's what they do. They ruin your stuff. Um, dude, you were 100% in the wrong. You shouldn't have done it. You definitely did a piece of shit thing, you know, but that doesn't give somebody the right to go to break into your fucking apartment. That's breaking and entering and destroying property. She should be in jail. Um, this is what you do. I would break up with her and uh, I would I would. Yeah, I would try to take legal action against the redhead. And at some point, I'd, you know, you want to send her a note, but don't do it. Just say, yeah, breaking and entering, you know, fucking felons never win either. Whatever the fuck that is. Um, yeah, dude, whatever. You know, it happened. And, uh, yeah, you know what I would do? You're 26. Stay single for a while. Stay single for a while. Go to the gym. Get back in shape. Figure out what the fuck you want to do. Do you want to fuck a bunch of women or do you want to f- meet the one? You know? I, but I, I think at this point, dude, you, you got enough fucking drama. I can't believe she gets to do that. Like, first of all, she got laid, the redhead. She got fucking laid, you know? She had a great fucking time, and she gets to bust up somebody's place like a fucking rock star and then walk out of there and feel like she's a fucking hero. This is why I don't give a shit that they make less an hour than I do. Because when you add up all the fucking perks, I mean, it's a pretty good goddamn deal being a woman. You know, you get all your emotions out all the fucking time. You get to break up people's shit and you get to live longer than men. I don't know what the fucking problem is. You're going to complain about an extra 79 cents? Uh, Rouge-tinted Rouge William. My fiance was a bit of a case, uh, raised in an odd Christian cult, escaped it uh, in high school, spent most of her adult life working to support her family that was still in the cult. Wow. Eight years ago, she met me. Six years ago, we started a relationship. It had its ups and downs, and it was very loving and helped change both of us for the better. A year ago, I finally proposed to her after we both became financially successful enough to support our own household. Uh, okay, so you both on equal ground. That's good. Shortly after that, she lost one of her close friends, then her grandfather. Uh, we got through it together, and I thought it brought us even closer. Everything was going peachy, right? Well, at this time, Cleo, get up here. Come here. Get up here. All right, just lay down, fucking relax. All right. Well, she fully converted. Okay, everything's going uh, peachy. Well, at this time, her family and her cult leaders saw an opening, and after a month or two, she started going back to the meetings. Since I didn't want to be the closed-minded guy and clinging near husband, I let her go to those meetings. Oh, God. Her beliefs are hers, and mine are mine, and everyone's happy, right? Well, she fully converted back. Her family threatened to shun her unless she married someone of the same faith, and since her cult holds proselytizing as one of the highest values, highest virtues, she tried to convert me. I was going to guess that that's what that meant. I can't say the word, which is basically going out and getting more members. I told her every one of my experiences led me to believe that her beliefs weren't right for me and uh, relatable at all to me. I didn't see a future where I believed in the same religious things as she did, but I did mind not, I did mind her believing in different things, but I didn't mind her believing in different things. All right, dude, you've been totally honest. You've you've handled this perfectly, like a champ. Then a month, she called the wedding off and broke it off with me. So I did the dude thing, drank, worked out, picked up new hobbies, hobbies, sorry. I was thinking horse, hobbies, (laughs) hobbies, and vacationed in the country halfway, uh, half the world away. I was relaxing on the beach in said country when someone from her cult approaches me and tries to convert me. What the fuck? Yeah, what? You're, you're in a different country? How do I get over the love of my life while still staying true to, my, to, to myself, you freckled cunt? Thanks and go fuck yourself. Visit Western Canada sometime soon. Uh, dude, she did you a favor, man. She did you a fucking favor. Get away from that shit, man. Like, like 
You can't be with somebody where their religious where their religion is telling them who to love. All right. Her now trying to get you converted is because she still loves you and that type of thing. So uh, you, I think your best case scenario of trying to get this woman back is to just completely cut her out of your life. Just ignore her and get on with your life. Who knows? You might find someone else first and be, I want to be with this person. Or she'll just finally be so fucking miserable in that and realize the happiness she had with you. And she'll go to you. But you can't go to her. Because if you go to her, you're going to come off weak. And she's going to try to drag you down into the fucking dark waters of that fucking cult. So I say you get on with your life. All right? That's the best, the best case scenario for you to uh, meet somebody new. And uh, that's the way you get over her. Just get on with your life. You know? And, uh, you know, when you love somebody, it doesn't totally go away. But it definitely fades like a fucking old tattoo. All right? Um... You know, that's that's the best you could do. You'll be fine, man. You'll meet somebody else. And, you know, who knows, dude, even if she did fucking leave, you know, did you did you really want to be sitting there? You know, one morning you wake up, the sun's coming up through your window and you look out and there's like a couple cult people standing there, you know, freaking you out. We just want to talk to her. You don't need the Manson family knowing where the fuck you are and approaching you. Jesus Christ, dude. Please tell me, I mean, I don't know. sitting on a beach and, and that's like, that's like invasion of the body snatchers. San Diego versus Kansas City. I'm going to go with the man with a million children and pick San Diego, right? What's his, I forget everybody's name. The second the season ends, it's the guy's fucking name. He's got like nine kids. Oh, what's his fucking name? What is his name? Not Andrew Luck, not Eli Manning, not Tyrod Taylor, not Derek Carr, not Matthew Stafford, Philip Rivers. I'm going to go with the man, you know, the man with the golden gun. This is the man with the million kids. He's like real life, the fucking Waltons, you know, and if you're going to have nine kids, you might as well be a fucking multimillionaire. Can you imagine what Christmas must be like at their house? Like how many fucking trees they have? It's got to be insane probably buys all these sick ass fucking gifts you know what i mean if i had nine fucking kids and i had his money i'd buy them all like electric cars and i'd make them you know those little toy cars that you can sit in little kid can sit in i'd make them race themselves around the fucking thing i'd have one of those circular driveways right i'd have time trials on saturday i'd put them all in the super softs on sunday and i'd let him just fucking whip around and whoever won got dessert and got to hang with me and then the rest of them would be banished to the loser wing of my mansion and sure they would resent me a lot of them would cry especially the little ones you know but there'd be no excuses come Sunday even if you were a baby you know if you couldn't figure out how to just roll down onto the gas pedal and at least make a fucking effort slam into somebody then that would be it you would be banished my wife didn't like it she would be banished too right this is why god never let me be a fucking nfl quarterback that's that's exactly what i would do if i had nine fucking kids jesus christ i get every one of them would have like chores and i would never have shit to do <clears throat> do you have nine kids you can actually run a farm so if you just live in a fucking house you know what i mean i give each one of them a room you clean up the study. That's your job, right? If you don't clean up the study, I'm taking away your car. You're gonna get, you're gonna get punished. A couple of grid grid positions come Sunday. You're never gonna have fucking dessert again. You'd have to be strict with nine kids, I would think, right? Jesus Christ, how many belts would you have to go through during your fucking the course of your, uh, you know? Or if you're that dude from the Vikings, like how many fucking weeds or switches would you be pulling out of the ground? What kind of a fucking lunatic hits his own son in the nuts with a switch? You know what I mean? I get it. That's the way you were brought up. But, you know, you usually try to correct shit with your parents. You know, at some point you'd be like, you know, I'm going to stop short of hitting my own son in his little fucking prepubescent ball sack with a fucking switch. You, you would like to think 
that someone would make that leap. But you know, it's not everybody, not everybody is is as enlightened as me. <laughs> I like giving people advice that have children. And I don't have any. You know what I mean? If you had nine kids, you could actually, you could even if nobody had any musical ability, if you sent all nine of them to American Idol, you got to think one of them would at least make it to Vegas, right? Someone would just have to be able to carry a fucking tune. Jesus Christ, that's a giant goddamn table. Five kids on one side, four on the other. Your wife on one side, you on the other. I mean, how many fucking turkeys is that? It's a lot of goddamn kids. That's fucking not. That's like turn of the last century level kids. You know what I mean? They would just have nine because you knew someone was going to die of polio. Somebody was going to get tuberculosis. Right? Someone was going to fall down a fucking well. And right there, you're down to six. You know, it starts getting nervous. I mean, those crops, you know, the harvest is coming in. We're down to six fucking kids. You know, your wife's just laying on her back, making fucking bread with one hand, churning butter with the other. And you just, at the end of the day, you come in and you just fucking walk right between her legs like you do when you're behind the herd of oxen. And you just fucking put another one in her. <laughs> Dude, you know what you'd be like? You're like a college coach, college basketball coach. It's like coaching Kentucky at that point, the way the kids would leave you. You know, Kentucky, they're like one and done, all the good players. So, like, you constantly got to be fucking out there, priming the pump, throwing the dollar bills around, handing out gold transams, right? But back in the day, rather than leaving and going to the pros, they were just dying. You know what I mean? The more they died, the more farmland they took up. I mean, granted, they were enriching the soil. If their bodies decomposed, well, their bodies would decompose back then, right? But they still put them in the boxes. But you couldn't plant over there. You know what I mean? Oh, my God, I'm eating this cauliflower. For some reason, I'm thinking about Eddie. Oh, that's interesting you say that, honey, because that's right where I fucking buried him. Yeah, when uh, the Native Americans decided to do a drive-by. <laughs> <laughs> and he took a fucking hatchet to the head. I told him to duck. He didn't. He was weak. He doesn't deserve to live. All right? And there you go. Now you're down to five kids. Now you're down to five kids. I'm going to Google this right now. Ways to die in 1900. Let's see what comes up. All right. Ways to die in 1900. Wasn't this a sixth sitcom? It was a short-lived sitcom, right? It was on... Right after Eight Ways to Fuck Your Mother, whatever the fuck it's <laughs> whatever the fuck it's called. Um, all right, Ways to Die. How we died two hundred years ago. Leading causes of death in the U.S. in nineteen hundred. All right, this is how your kids died. If you had, no, this is why you had to have nine kids back in the day. All right, influenza pneumonia. See ya. There goes a good two, three kids. Tuberculosis, I called that. This is like the morbid family feud. Gastrointestinal infections. Heart disease. And then cerebrovascular disease. Whatever the fuck that is. What about farming equipment? By 1950, it was heart disease. Oh, no, though, this, this isn't kids, though. I got to put, I got to say kids. Uh, uh, ways to die as a as a kid. Jesus, what what sort of watch list does this put me on? All right, let me write. Let me type this out. Ways to die as a child in 1900. Well, childbirth was one of them, and you lost your wife. That was like your scout, right? Fuck, who's gonna keep bringing in the new talent? Um, ways to die trends death. There's historical horror of childbirth, all right? Leading causes of death. Uh, you know what? They're not going to have it. Death and childbirth. Whatever. I'm still going with farming equipment, you know? Dad's out on the f <laughs> team of oxen. Go tell Pa it's time for dinner, right? And you go out there and the oxen get spooked or some shit and they run over you. Bill, we don't want to know about fucking dead farm kids. All right. Well, you know, the fuck you want from me? Um, as much as people talk about the Beatles and how great their music is, was, whatever you want to say, I totally agree with them. 
I think they're the greatest band of all time. But I have to be honest with you, John Lennon and Paul McCartney redefined Pussy Whipped. You have to watch this fucking video. It's John Lennon is singing with Chuck Berry. Chuck Berry is probably one of the main reasons why John Lennon, Lennon ever picked up a guitar. So now he's on TV. He gets to play with his idol. They're playing uh, Chuck Berry's hit Memphis. Okay, John Lennon's got Yoko in his fucking band. They're in the middle of singing this song on television. And they're killing it. It's going great. Yoko's playing some stupid fucking drum. And even though she has no fucking talent whatsoever, he's putting her in the fucking band just so she'll shut the fuck up and stop nagging him because he's too much of a fucking pussy to tell her that she has no talent. All right? The only reason why you're here, Yoko, is because you're sucking my dick. All right? No, you can't play the bongos. But anyway, she's up there playing the bongos, right? So John Lennon, Chuck Berry, two of the greats of all time, harmonizing, singing this hit from the 1950s. That's what this moment's about. And Yoko, in the middle of it, can't handle that she's not getting any shine. She takes the fucking microphone out of the stand, starts playing the bongo. And as they're singing, you know, go, go, Johnny, go, whatever. She picks up the mic and I swear to God goes, yeah, 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 some fucking crazy shit. And you see Chuck Berry's eyes fucking open as wide as they are. And, and it's that it's that fucking look. Dude, you ever have like a buddy of yours and he's 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 dating some fucking psycho, but he's in love with her, so you can't fucking say anything, and you're just sitting there waiting for the fucking lightning bolt to hit your friend in the head where he finally realizes that he's dating a psycho cunt. Chuck Berry had that look on his face. Dude, I'm not even jo I, I'm not even exaggerating. She, yeah, yeah, that's what the fuck she did. And Chuck Berry's like, what the fuck? And it's kind of like, John, that's your woman. Get her in line. And John Lennon does not even fucking. He doesn't even blink. He just he just keeps playing. And then she does it again later on in that song. And then you look at all the other musicians, and they, they just keep playing the song like Yoko isn't even fucking there. And uh, I actually get infuriated when I watch this video, the fact that John didn't just stop playing in that moment. And what he should have done was dressed her down right there. It's like, fine, you want to have a fucking moment? This is your moment. If you ever fucking do that again, I will slap you so fucking hard in the head, your eyes are going to look like mine. Do you understand me? You play that fucking bongo and you shut your face. You look like that bitch who crawled out of the fucking well and ring. You understand me? I don't even know why I'm fucking you. I could be fucking anybody. You can't play the pong bongos. You can't sing. Yeah. Shut your fucking face. And then he just walks back up to the mic and just counts the band back in. Right? Isn't that what the fuck you should have done? All right, this is the longest fucking revenge story I think I've ever read. Let me see if I can uh, see if I can fucking just. I'm gonna I'm gonna read that one next week when I have the energy. All right, questions. All right, Bill. Uh, I have a question for you. I was hoping you might be able to shine some insight on this. I have this great friend that that's a girl. Mistake. Um, and we get along great, and we have never had any sort of sexual tension. Fucking up. Or interest, despite her being attractive. All right, dude, right there, you're either gay or you're, or you're an idiot. And I'm, not try I'm giving you some tough love here. That's a fucking stupid situation to be involved in. That's stupid. All right, unless you're using her to attract other females to get you fucking laid. Let's see if this is the case. I will continue reading. So she has this smoking hot friend. Oh, there we go. That I'd met a few times and always flirted with, but... uh. But it's just been overall friendly. So this chick calls me up one night, and I'm at the bar at, like, midnight and asks if I want to stay up drinking with her, and she come pick me up. So obviously I agree. Things go very good, and we have a few drinks and flirt. And when I make my move, she gets all upset, like I should have known. She just wants to be friends when she calls me up at midnight to say to stay up drinking with her alone. After the incident, the bitch still has the balls to, sl to ask to sleep over. Uh, since then, I have noticed all her friends are trying to be my friend when all I want to do is rail the shit out of them. Bill, I was hoping you could you should you could shine some light on the situation and help me out. Yeah, dude, never have a friend as a as a female. You know, you, you always got to be fucking them. That's the only reason to be around them. You know, I know that sounds really sexist, but you know, I I just. 
I'm speaking from me. There's no fucking point in hanging out with that level of frustration if you're not having sex with them. And if they're actually like a good friend, then that's the one that you should uh, – I mean, that's the ultimate. If you're banging them and they're also a great friend, that's the one you marry because you got a connection there, right? But if you just, I mean, they're using you as like a live teddy bear. And um, yeah, the next time they call up, just be like, no, I'm, I, I'm not, I can't hang out tonight. Why? What are you doing? I'm going to go out and try to get some ass tonight. I know I'm not getting any from you. And it's frustrating because you're hot and I want to bend you over every piece of fucking furniture in my apartment. Hey, I can't believe you said that. Yeah, well, I just did. Are you going to come over here and fuck me? Well, then great. I have to go. Why are you being so mean? I'm not being mean. I'm being honest. Okay? Do you know how many times I've jerked off to you? It's fucking, it's annoying. That you just, you just, I'm telling you, like, that's a little aggressive, but that's what you have to start doing. You just have to be straightforward and honest and don't do it like I just said it. Do it, if, do it how you can do it and pull it off and you just say it like that. Just be like, yeah, I want to go out. I want to try to get laid tonight. All right. And I go out with you and you're not fucking me. And then other girls see me with you and they think that I am fucking you, which I'm not. And I end up going home, uh, dry humping my futon, you know, and it's really fucking with my self-esteem. Okay. So that's it. So basically, what are you saying? You're saying that um, if I don't suck your cock, you don't want to hang out with me? Yes, that is what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Your conversations are awful. You know, I'm sure they're interesting to other females, but not to me. I don't want to. I don't want to talk about that shit. I can give a shit about the hills, the OC, the ocean, or whatever the fuck out of the stupid show you want. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. I want to fuck you. Okay? It's world, right there. You know what it is? You ever see you watch the World Series of Poker when you go all in? That's what you do. Just say what the fuck you want to do. You push all your chips in. Then you stand up and you start walking around. You wait for that next card to drop. <laughs> you see what the fuck happens. Yeah, dude. That's my advice. Get out of that whole circle of, yeah, he's like a big teddy bear. Fuck that. Fuck that. All right? You're not a teddy bear. Well, you are one right now. You got to stop being that guy. So fuck all of them. Go, uh, where are your guy friends? What are they doing? Go hang out with them. Go get a fucking wingman. Get yourself back in the game. And uh, go out there and talk some shit. Hit on some girl you don't give a fuck about so you can practice not giving a fuck. And just say a bunch of shit that you would never say to some girl that you gave a shit about. And, because you don't give a fuck if the girl says no. Start with that. You know, always wear a condom. And, uh, and that's it. That's what I would do. That's what I should have done. I didn't. I just have that knowledge now because I'm fucking... Uh, have I ever been the... You know something? I was never the friend, but I was definitely the douchebag. I was definitely the... the uh, not even pussy whipped. It wasn't even pussy whipped. It was just I couldn't fucking speak up for myself. I was afraid of having a confrontation. And then by the time I had the final confrontation, I was like... Aah! And it was like fucking a year worth of shit and we broke up. Um, but that's a whole nother story. So anyways, that's the, uh, that, that's the podcast for... Uh, for this week, I think, right? Yeah, I got five fucking minutes before I got to go here. Uh, all right, skeletons in her Facebook. Hey, Billy boy, I'm a big fan and new listener. Thank you. Uh, ba -ba -da -ba -da. I am in a little bit of a predicament. I got onto my laptop the other day when I woke up around one in the afternoon. I worked the night shift. I look through my history and I see some fucked up conversations that my girlfriend is having on Facebook with another guy. Oh, geez. Uh, they were old emails, but it was obvious that she would, she's still thinking about this guy. Wait a minute. I got to go back and do the math on this. I got into the laptop the other day. I woke up around 1 in the afternoon. I worked the night shift. I looked through my history, and I see some fucked up conversations that my girlfriend is having on Facebook with another guy. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're on your laptop? Dude, fuck all this shit. Just be honest. You got a weird vibe off your girlfriend or you're fucking, you don't trust, you don't trust her. Or you don't trust people in general. And you went on her Facebook account. Isn't that what you did? Okay. Now we're caught up here. There were old emails, but it's obvious that she's still thinking about this guy. How is it still obvious if they're old emails? If she hasn't emailed the guy since she got with you. 
She, she says, the one that caught me was from around two years ago. It said something about having a sleepover with this guy. The only problem is that we were dating at the time. Uh-oh. Then a few months later, she emails him again saying she misses him. What the fuck? I've been nothing but good to this girl. That doesn't mean shit, dude. If her heart's with this other guy. Uh, she lives in my house, doesn't pay bills, or even tries, or even tries to keep food in the house. I'm always the one keeping the house straight. I'm the one who does everything. I'm too nice a guy, I guess. Everything I say, she freaks out and starts to cry and shit. I've been with her for almost three years. I don't know what to do. Should I confront her about the other guy? I was kind of snooping on her shit when I found this stuff. There it is. There it is. Yeah, dude, you know what? You know why you're snooping. And you knew what you were going to find that you didn't want to find. You probably had one eye closed because you knew what you were going to find, and you found it. Anyways, he goes, I mean, don't get me wrong. She snooped on my Facebook, too, at times, and caught me talking to other girls. But all my life, I've never been unfaithful to her. And this kid that she used to know looks like Sloth from the Goonies. Fucked up brother. Any advice would be great. Yeah, you guys, what are you doing? You're just clinging to each other. Break up. Uh, uh, what? What are you doing? All right? First of all, I don't believe that you've never been unfaithful to her. I don't believe that because it took you fucking two paragraphs to admit that you actually went into her fucking Facebook. So I, I think if this email was another two paragraphs, she'd be like, except this one time when I let this girl blow me 12 fucking times on seven different dates, you know? <clears throat> um, I don't know. First of all, forget the fact that she's fucking around or, or whether or not she's fucking around or whether she has feelings with somebody else. How can you be in a relationship with somebody that every time you bring something up or want to talk to, about something heavy, she freaks out and cries about it? She's not an adult. You know? She's a child. She's acting like a little kid. All right? There's no reason to fucking cry. When you're an adult... There's no reason to fucking cry unless somebody something tragic has happened to somebody you love. Other than that, if I'm bringing up the fact that I feel like you you know you haven't done the dishes as many times as I've done it lately, or uh, you know I go to bed earlier than you do, and you come into bed with your fucking iPad and it's lighting up the goddamn room like a flying saucer's coming down, and you have a little consideration. This, if you start crying during that, you're an asshole. All right, you're a fucking child. You know what you should do? You should just get a fucking pacifier. That's what I would do. The next time you go to bring something up, she starts crying. You just pull it out and be like, (laughs) and you wave it in her face and you just throw it against the wall. And you go, you pick it up, you fucking baby. Right? And right there, you're not going to have to worry about what to do in the relationship because it's going to be over. Uh, underrated. Uncle Billiam. This could be the underrated of the century. Keeping your dick in check. Flipping the script on the ladies. And refusing your woman's sex. I just told my girl no sex till she goes and applies for 10 jobs today. And the look on her face was priceless. Like she just had no clue what just happened. Looked like a little kid that had just been, just had its teddy bear stolen. Love the podcast and go fuck yourself, you redheaded bastard. Uh, yeah, no, that's a great one. That's a great one. I mean, you're fucking with that. That's you know what? You having your dick in check is like your woman, um, fucking bench pressing more than you. That's basically it. I mean, the core thing a guy has over a woman is that he's physically stronger. Okay, the core thing a woman has is she is that we're run by our dicks. Well, I mean, they're also smarter. I think they're just they're. I, I do think women are smarter in in a lot of areas. Just because they have to be. It's a nature thing. You know? We're stronger, so we don't... We, I think we just didn't use our brains as much. Back when you could fucking drag a woman around by her hair and beat her with a branch. I said, shut the fuck up! You know? You didn't have to grow as a human being. They had to sit there and be like, how do I get that big dumb oaf to do exactly what I want him to do? I can't grab him by the fucking throat. How can I make him do it and actually make him feel like it's his decision? You know? All right, advice for the week. Bill, I've known this young lady for a few years, and we're very fond of each other. 
Uh, but she has had, she's had, she has a possessive boyfriend with a stupid haircut, and a couple of times when she's broken up with him, she's come to me. Uh, but then she goes back to macro man. Uh, this is the thing that bothers me. Whenever things have got, gotten sexual between us, like I go down on her and blow her fucking mind. This guy has definitely got confidence. He goes, she never returns the favor. She gets disgusted. She even gets disgusted if I sulk in my seat that I didn't get any. Dude, sulking is like, I don't, I'm not going to sit here and act like I know what turns women on, but I can tell you the exact opposite of turning a woman on, if you want to have the exact opposite Spanish fly, would be sulking. Nothing <laughs> makes a pussy dry up like sulking. Just letting you know right there, okay? Um, but nothing makes it wetter with complete indifference. Um, anyways, <laughs> once she said callously, oh, after she did, you know, after the guy went down on her and then she, he didn't get a blowjob, <clears throat> she once callously said, have a wank to alleviate my horniness. After having her completely naked on my chair, worshiping her and p pleasuring her holes. Jesus Christ, buddy. Thank God I'm not yelling. That one right there would have kicked me out. Uh, it was just me with the styrofoam cup. Another time when we had intercourse, we were drunk. She stopped me halfway through, and she even stopped halfway through uh, a shit doing you a favor hand job. She's never made me come. These are only, the only examples of when she tried to get me off, and I'm a good-looking chappy, so it's not that. Recently, I boycotted her body. I said, let's be friends to be strictly platonic. I won't even play with her norks. I'm guessing that's her titties. Uh, this, has, this has had the result of her trying to rekindle things like the old magic. Um, if she's not that into me, what the fuck is going on? I'm finished with her, but any insights you can give is a treasure. All right, first of all, dude, you're not finished with her. Um, just halfway through writing that, you probably realize what a sap you were being. All right? Okay, first of all, who's kidding who? You're, you're fucking with a psycho. All right? And uh, I don't know. This is, a very, this is a very touchy one to talk about here, but uh, this girl strikes me as one of those girls who wants to be put in her place and wants to be bent over something and wants a guy to tell her what the fuck is what. All right? Okay? Consensually. Do you understand what I mean? Okay, don't take this the wrong way. Go in and just fucking give, him a forearm, give her a forearm shiver. Right? I'm not saying to do that. All right? You know, some girls are cunts and they know they're a cunt and they want a guy to, to basically tell them that. They, it, it, it could be this. I have no idea. But I can tell you one thing right now. Sulking... And keep coming back for more. You're like Charlie Brown. She keeps pulling the football out. And, uh, you know, if you want to fuck this girl, walk away from her. Stop returning her phone calls and all that type of shit. You, you basically started to do that when you boycotted her body. But then you said, let's be friends. That's a weak move. Okay? What's, this girl, I think, wants to see you be a fucking man. All right? And you're not. You're going down on her. You're pleasing her. And she's doing everything everything she can to disrespect you and you're allowing it um and i think that's turning her off and i think she's a fucking sadistic psycho so she's getting you off and uh, she's leaving you with blue balls you know i don't know that might be it or she might be fucking angry at something else and she's taking it out on you all i know dude is walk away from this girl just walk away from her but for some fucking reason you still want to bang her one more time blow her off Blow off her texts and her calls for like a week and a half and then randomly answer one. And when you pick up the phone, just just have a whatever vibe. Hey, what's going on? You haven't been returning my calls or my, or my texts? Yeah, I've been busy. What's up? You want to hang out? No. Why not? Yeah, you know, I don't know. What, what do I want to hang out with you for? And get blue balls? You know? You're fucking selfish. You're fucking annoying. Leave me alone. You know? That's ah, probably too angry. But just... <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I'm fucking angry right now that I have to talk like this. Um, yeah, just blow her off. and Just be... You know? And when you go to meet her, meet her in a public place. Don't go over a place where she can immediately... She's going to dress extra sexy when you come over there because she's trying to get that power over you again. Meet her in a fucking public place. 
and be talking to her as you're kind of glancing around the room, you know? Sort of hit on another girl while she's standing there. I'm telling you. You know? And when she asks you to go home with her, don't. Just say, ah, I'm cool, or whatever. You know? Fucking blow her off. If she ever calls you again, if she wants to hang out or whatever, tell, tell her to come over to your place. And the second she starts acting like a douche, kick her out. I don't know. It's, it's, it's What sucks about a girl like that is immediately you got to try to get into her head, then you got to start playing games. It's not worth it. There's, there's too many decent girls out there who will, when they take the dick out, they will fucking complete whatever you want. So I would just walk away from her. Um, let's be friends. Jesus Christ, buddy. That and sulking, you need to take... Those are the two parts of your game you need to work on this off season. All right? And then maybe next year you'll get the ring. Okay, good luck. All right, next one. Facebook messages. Hey, dear Billy, uh, I need your help dealing with the girlfriend issue. I have been seeing my lady since December. I'm 30 and she is 27. That's a good fucking age difference. I like it. She lived in the city and I lived in the country. We started as a long distance relationship, but it got serious quickly. And now she has moved back home. Um, she's, what is this, fucking Green Acres? But up, but up, but Um, she is busy buying her own house, but has stayed with me for the last two weeks. We've talked about me moving in with her. We tell each other, I love you, and we're making plans for the future, et cetera, et cetera. So today I log onto my computer and her Facebook page is still logged in. Uh-oh. This is a whole new world, man. The Facebook thing. Uh, me being a curious creep, I started snooping. In the message section, I find a conversation she's had with a former boyfriend. On February 1st, she tells the guy, I still miss your face. Done. It's over. Walk away. Walk away. Like De Niro and Heat. Just fucking get up and walk out. It's over. I don't need, I don't even need to read the rest of this, sir. It is fucking over. But I'll keep reading it just because I have to fill up an hour here. But I know, you know, the people listening know. Um, anyways, he goes, I don't see any response from the guy. Then on February, February 11th, she trolls out another message. I love how now you're stalking her Facebook page. <laughs> As well, you should. You had probable cause. You never did. No, you were, you were a creep. And then you found, you know what? This one stand up in court because court you didn't have a warrant. But you know what? You got instinct and you can't teach that. Um, anyways, she trolls out another message that say, hope all is well. And again, no response. Yeah, dude, she's settling for you. I hate to tell you that, but she's settling for you. What she's trying to do is, is if this motherfucker goes, you know, I miss your face too, she's out. All right? But if he doesn't, he doesn't get back to her, she's going to settle for you. Okay? And I'm not saying you're a bad person. I'm just saying the feeling isn't there. She's settling for you, which means the entire time of your fucking marriage, every time you're not looking at her, she's just going to be staring at the back of your head. Looking at your dumb shoulders, something, just going like, Ugh, how the fuck did I end up with, how did I fuck that other one up? You know, you don't want to be that. You got to get somebody who's crazy about you. Anyways, here we go. There were some previous somewhat explicit messages they sent back and forth before we got together and messages about how they should text instead of Facebook. All that being said, she is good. To, all that being said, however, everybody, uh, she is good to me. I'm good to her, and we have fun a fun, loving relationship. I had solid trust, and now I'm very confused. How should I approach her with this? I know if I keep it to myself, it's going to fester and really piss me off. Would you head for the hills immediately or give the relationship a chance? Thanks, and go fuck yourself. This is what I would do. I would be 100% honest with her. I'd say, listen, i got to be honest with you. Uh, what the fuck is today? The 18th, about a month and a half ago. I want to use the computer, and your Facebook page was open. And even though I shouldn't have looked, I did look. And then she's going to start crying, and she's going to start fucking. She's going to turn her fucking cap around backwards and get in your face and start screaming and yelling, blah, 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 blah. blah. Fuck all of that. Fuck all of that. She's going to come at you like that because she knows what's coming. All right? 
And don't get mad. Don't take the fucking bait. This is the time, sir. You have to hang on to your fucking emotion. She's going to cry or she's going to yell or she's going to do both because she knows what the... How could you snoop? Well, you didn't trust me anyways. You know, and, and you don't have the line that they, they have where they just, you know, female intuition. They, they get to hide behind that, you know, like, like guys don't have any fucking instincts. Like we weren't blessed with any of that, you know, fucking chasing down saber tooth tigers with sharpened sticks. Like we weren't, we weren't blessed with any sort of instinct. Give me a fucking break. All right. So anyway, she's going to cry or she's going to yell or she's going to do fucking both. And you just stand there and you let her do it. All right. And when she's done yelling and crying or whatever the fuck it is, just say, yeah. And I saw a message that you wrote to an old boyfriend saying, I still miss your face. You know? And then you tried to contact him again on the 11th, and it's been bugging me. And I didn't want to bring this up to you because I didn't want to look like a creep, and I didn't want to hurt your feelings that I don't trust you, but um, you obviously still have feelings for this person. And I guess you're settling for me. Like if this guy doesn't get back to you, then you're going to move forward with and settle for me. And that's not what I want. I want someone who's crazy about me and doesn't have other issues. You, you seem to have unresolved stuff with this guy. And, um, you know, I'm not getting any, any, any younger. So, you know, and then she's, yeah, break it up with me. Blah, 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 and all this shit. And just keep going. Listen, um, there's a face that you miss, sweetheart, and it's not mine. <laughs> you know, sir, take your heart and stick it on the fucking nightstand. And go into your brain. All right? Get some self-esteem here. This is fucking bullshit. All right? All that being said, she's good to me. She's not good to you. Not 100%. All right? I'm telling you, get out of it. Get out of it. Fuck that. All right? Did I make myself clear? <laughs> Girlfriend's past. Hey there, Billy boy. I have, I have, I'm having problems. I'm having problems reading this, sir. I'm having problems dealing with all the guys my girlfriend has fucked before me. She's 17 and a senior in high school, and she's been with four to five guys all the way and blown more. Now, why are you saying four to five? You know, if you've only fucked four or five people, she ought to be able to remember all of them. She, she said, my first girlfriend, I'm 18. Be easy there, buddy. Go easy. Is 17 considered underage? Because you can get busted for statutory rape. Uh, Make sure she's legal. He goes, she's my first gay girlfriend. I'm 18, but I wasn't uh, a virgin because before because my neighbor forced me to have sex with her when I was five. What? Sex with what? You little ding dong. What was she doing? Dude, that's fucking creepy. I, I didn't even know that. Anyways, she lost her virginity in a one night stand when she was 14. It just kills me every day that my virginity was stolen from me and she just gives hers away. It doesn't help that she still goes to the same school as the guy. And while they don't really talk, she fucked him again last summer, a couple of months before we started dating. I feel like she's just let people use her, and it really disgusts me. I don't even know if I love her or if I even like her very much. Am I overreacting about her past or not? No, dude, what you're doing is you're tapping into how you feel about this girl and what you're looking for in a woman, and this girl isn't it, okay? It, it's, you know, hopefully what it, whatever happened to you didn't happen to her, but um, what, what you do, sir, is you're fighting your self-esteem or discovering it. All right. Listen to that voice. Okay. This isn't the kind of woman that you're looking to be with. So I would break up with her. All right. And then get with a girl that hasn't fucked four to five guys that you're going to pass on your way to math class. All right. That's the deal. All right. You sound like you've you've gone through some shit. I'd probably go to therapy over that one there. (laughs) You know, whatever the fuck happened to you. And, uh, but what's great is you've come out of this that you, you, 
uh, still tapped in what you're looking for in a girlfriend. You want, you want, you know, a great girl deserves a great guy. And you sound like you're a great guy, so go out there and get a great girl. That's what you should do, all right? And be healthy human beings with one another, okay? Don't let what the fuck happened to you when you're five go down some dark sexual road that you pick these damaged girls that you relate to. Both of you probably need to go to therapy and work some shit out, all right? But she didn't write me. You did. So I'm telling you to do that. And, um, yeah, get yourself a, yeah, the fuck is with my voice? <laughs> get a girl that you're proud to be with that you want to bring home to your parents. All right? That's the one. There you go. All right. All right, goddamn ex-girlfriend. Dear Billy Boy, um, your podcast is killer, man. Thanks. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And he says, I'm writing you to get some insight on my ex-girlfriend's situation. About six months ago, my ex dumped my ass and totally crushed my heart. Ah, that's the worst. You got to go through it, though. Um, he says, I was fucked up for a while, but took some of your advice and focused on improving my own shit. I never called her, texted her, or did any asshole for six months. A couple of months ago, she texts me. Ah, oh, fucking, I knew it. I knew it. Now, without reading this thing, she's texted you. Now, either she legitimately wants to get back together with you, which if you still love her, that would be a good thing, or whatever the fuck she... Whatever life path she went down over the last six months has hit a hard, has hit a bump in the road, and maybe she's having second thoughts, or maybe she's completely evil, and she's like, wow, he just never called me again. Why don't I call him up and mind fuck him? Those are my three guesses on the, uh, the cunt genie lamp there. All right, so she texted me. She wanted to know what I've been up to and how I was doing. She also wanted to know why I unfriended her on Facebook. And he writes, why do you think, you dumb cunt? <laughs> now, wait a minute. Did you unfriend her because of my advice, or did you do that on your own? That's a great thing. you got, you got to get cut the cancer out. You can't be watching what the fuck she's doing. All you're doing is prolonging that pain in your heart. you got to, uh, I'm telling you, you gotta, you got to cut off all contact, and then you got to go Chris Bosch, where you just got to drop to your knees a couple times a day and cry it out. Don't be afraid to fucking do that. Now, I wouldn't do it in front of a bunch of men, but, you know, do it on your own. Like, as a man, you have to understand that the reason why you're able to cry is because you're supposed to. Because if you don't, you keep it in your chest, and it becomes anger, and then you yell at your kids. All right. I resisted the urge to tell her to go fuck herself and kept my responsible. My response is cool and casual. Dude, you are on the road to a post-breakup blowjob. That's where you are right now. Let's see if you keep the car on the road. Here's my question. How the fuck do broads know when you are finally getting over them and that they should get a hold of you and make you feel like shit again? Also, do you see? I knew it. Also, do you think it's a dick move to get a hold of an ex if you're the one who dumped them when they haven't gotten a hold of you since the breakup? Finally, how do you think I should handle this going forward? Um, well, you know what? You... You basically, you learned one of life's tough lessons is that, uh, well, I mean, you know something? I might be being a dickhead. Like, maybe guys, guys do this shit, too. All right? Guys do do this shit, too. You got those guys who, uh, they break up with a girl, but then they keep her in, in, they try to, like, hold on to her so no one else can fuck her. You know, guys who do that shit. So this is really, like, I'm being a sexist moron, as usual. Um, I'm coming from the male perspective. That's all I got. All right, trying to show a little empathy here. Um, how do they know? I don't know, but they're great at it. So rather than trying to figure it out, because I don't know that you can as a guy, just respect that they have that ability. All right? Um, you might want to consider changing your cell phone number so she can't text slash mind fuck you again. Um what a f it is the fucking worst. They're just the fucking worst in that situation, dude. You just you got to walk away from a man. So I can't even remember what the fuck you asked me. I'm going through all the breakups I've been through mentally right now. Um, all right. So the first thing you said is how the fuck do broads know when you're finally over them? I don't know. Change your cell phone number. It's my solution. 
Um, also, do you think it's a dick move to get a hold of an ex? If you have no intention of getting back with them, yes, I do. And you have to accept the guilt that you feel that you broke somebody's heart. And you have to own that. You can't, like, call and just call to make sure you're doing okay. You're not helping that other person. If you have no intent, you're giving them a half a second of hope. And then, you know, you just, you, you're, you're ruining them. You got to let them go. Um, and lastly, how do you think I should handle this going forward? Yeah, I would say uh, don't respond to her texts or uh, even that. Just her texting you and seeing your name and knowing that she's thinking about you and your heart's still going to be like, well, maybe, maybe she wants to get back together. I would just change your number. Start over again. Go Bill Bixby. Get a backpack. Walk out of town. Do, 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 do. Go down the fucking street. Um, start working out. Get some new women in your life. That's another thing. Go out there. Go hit, hit on something you think's out of your league. Who gives a shit? Go have a good time. Um, hitting on a girl that's, uh, that's so-called out of your league is like playing a sport against people who are better than you. It makes you better. It ups your game. All right? So then when you, you play against somebody who's only a little out of your league, you're actually you're used to playing beyond, and you're not nervous. You're used to that speed. You know? Does that make any fucking sense? I hope it does. All right, questions. All right, Bill, uh, I have a question for you. I was hoping you might be able to shine some insight on this. I have this great friend that that's a girl. Mistake! Um, and we get along great, and we have never had any sort of sexual tension. Fucking up! Or interest, despite her being attractive. All right, dude, right there, you're either gay or you're, or you're an idiot. And I'm, not try I'm giving you some tough love here. That's a fucking stupid situation to be involved in. That's stupid. All right, unless you're using her to attract other females to get you fucking late. Let's see if this is the case. I will continue reading. So she has this smoking hot friend. Oh, there we go. That I'd met a few times and always flirted with, but... Uh, but it's just been overall friendly. So this chick calls me up one night, and I'm at the bar at like midnight and asks if I want to stay up drinking with her, and she come pick me up. So obviously I agree. Things go very good, and we have a few drinks and flirt. And when I make my move, she gets all upset like I should have known. She just wants to be friends when she calls me up at midnight to, say, to stay up drinking with her alone. After the incident, the bitch still has the balls to, sl to ask to sleep over. Uh, since then, I've noticed all her friends are trying to be my friend when all I want to do is rail the shit out of them. Bill, I was hoping you could, you should, you could shine some light on the situation and help me out. Yeah, dude. Never have a friend as a, as a female. You know, y you always got to be fucking them. That's the only reason to be around them. You know? I know that sounds really sexist, but, you know, I, I just... I'm speaking from me. There's no fucking point in hanging out with that level of frustration if you're not having sex with them. And if they're actually like a good friend, then that's the one that you should... Uh, I mean, that's the ultimate. If you're banging them and they're also a great friend, that's the one you marry because you got a connection there, right? But if you just... I mean, they're using you as like a live teddy bear. And... Um, yeah, the next time they call up, just be like, "No, I'm I, I'm not. I can't hang out tonight." Why? What are you doing? I'm gonna go out and try to get some ass tonight. I know I'm not getting any from you, and it's frustrating because you're hot, and I want to bend you over every piece of fucking furniture in my apartment. Oh my God, I can't believe you said that. Yeah, well, I just did. Are you gonna come over here and fuck me? Well, then great. I have to go. Why are you being so mean? I'm not being mean. I'm being honest. Okay. You know how many times I've jerked off to you? It's fucking. It's annoying. That you just, you just, I'm telling you, like, that's a little aggressive, but that's what you have to start doing. You just have to be straightforward and honest and don't do it like I just said it. Do it, if, do it how you can do it and pull it off and you just say it like that. Just be like, yeah, I want to go out. I want to try to get laid tonight. All right. And I go out with you and you're not fucking me. And then other girls see me with you and they think that I am fucking you, which I'm not. And I end up going home, uh, dry humping my futon, you know, and it's really fucking with my self-esteem. Okay. So that's it. So basically, what are you saying? You're saying that um, if I don't suck your cock, you don't want to hang out with me? Yes, that is what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Your conversations are awful. 
you know, I'm sure they're interesting to other females, not to me. I don't want to, I don't want to talk about that shit. I could give a shit about the hills, the OC, the ocean, or whatever the fuck out of this stupid show you want. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. I want to fuck you. Okay? It's world's uh, right there. You know what it is? You ever see what watch the World Series of Poker when you go all in? That's what you do. Just say what the fuck you want to do. You push all your chips in, then you stand up and you start walking around. You wait for that next card to drop. <laughs> you see what the fuck happens. Yeah, dude. That's my advice. Get out of that whole circle of yeah, he's like a big teddy bear. Fuck that. Fuck that. All right? You're not a teddy bear. Well, you are one right now. You got to stop being that guy. So fuck all of them. Go uh where are your guy friends? What are they doing? Go hang out with them. Go get a fucking wingman. Get yourself back in the game. And uh, go out there and talk some shit. Hit on some girl you don't give a fuck about so you can practice not giving a fuck. And just say a bunch of shit that you would never say to some girl that you gave a shit about. And because you don't give a fuck if the girl says no. Start with that. You know, always wear a condom. And, uh, and that's it. That's what I would do. That's what I should have done. I didn't. I just have that knowledge now because I'm fucking... Uh, have I ever been the, you know, someone I was never the friend, but I was definitely the douchebag. I was definitely the, the, uh, not even pussy whipped. It wasn't even pussy whipped. It was just, I couldn't fucking speak up for myself. I was afraid of having a confrontation. And then by the time I had the final confrontation, I was like, Aah! and it was like fucking a year with this shit and we broke up. Um, but that's a whole nother story. All right. Hypocrisy of the female gender. Oh, Jesus. Come on, guys. Come on, ladies. You know what? Women, trash the guys. Let's have this fucking be balanced here. Fair and balanced. All right. What do we got here? Hypocrisy of the female gender. My fucking... My batteries are going to run out here. I got to get through this one quickly. Hey, Bill. A.K.A. A.K.A. Bill Jazit shot during the summer. That really has nothing to do with my name. That's just sort of my first name and then a come shot but you know you tried he goes i'm in a bit of a pickle he's got jills he's got a phallic vegetable is that a vegetable is a pickle a vegetable or a fruit well let's see bill you're planting cucumbers it's not on a tree it's in the ground it's a fucking vegetable look at me mr fucking green jeans here anyways could be serious could be just something that'll blow over but i like your opinion anyway um here we go. A few days ago, while I was getting a coffee, I saw my girl, girlfriend's best friend kissing a dude that doesn't look like her boyfriend. But like the rational human being that I am, I thought I asked my girl before I jumped to any conclusion. So I asked her if her boyfriend's still her boyfriend. She said yes and asked why, so I told her what I saw, and her reaction is something I didn't expect. She went silent. So I asked her if she already knew and said, and she said yes, and begged me not to tell the guy. So I said that I'd like to hear your, hear this. Wait. So I said that I'd like to hear the story first. Oh, my story first. I don't know what the fuck. Well, I'm just gonna read it the way he wrote it. So I said that I said that I'd like to hear the story first, so I can assess how I want to go about the situation. I'm sorry, and she refused. So I said, I guess it would be the same way if you were cheating on me, huh? You would act the same way, and you two would conspire over it. And she denied that, started crying, and said she would never cheat on me. Uh, I told her it was fucking bullshit, that she's implying that this cunt of a best friend has even the slightest legit reason to be a piece of shit. And I eventually left to go get some air, though it was difficult since she caused a scene and started screaming down the hall for me. I love when they do that, right? Because the second a woman starts screaming in public, the guy's like, at the very least, a borderline rapist. Um, all right. Well, so far, okay, I, I, you know, I'm going to just read the rest of this. He was at that point, she was breaking down crying and asked me to come back, but I was fucking done. The funny thing is about this, the funny thing about this is I barely even know the guy. I met him like twice. He seems like a cool down to earth guy and all, but I don't really owe him anything yet. What's happening just triggers something in my mind, and I feel like I should tell him. Multiple people know his girlfriend is cheating on him, and he has no fucking clue. I really lost a lot of respect for my girlfriend, but she always talks about loyalty and how important it is to her, and how she hates cheaters because she knows how it feels to be on the other end. What a fucking hypocrite. 
When confronted with the situation head on, she just excuses it and, and mitigates it with secret. What? She mitigates it with secret court NSA legal reasoning. So I have to believe. Oh, no. Did this cut out? Is it cutting out? Hello. 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 Something sounds weird. I think it's still taping, right? Oh, Jesus. All right. Trying to read even faster here. Um, what the fuck is going on with the sound now? Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. There we go. I'm back. And I'm back. Um, this is the worst read ever. I'm sorry, because this is very interesting. Uh, I can't even look her, look at her or talk to her right now. Just thinking about the way she reacted to, to all of this still pisses me off. So what should I do here? Do I tell him? I don't know. Maybe I should just say, fuck him. He can't save the world, right? And what about my girlfriend? She's quick to say cheating's wrong until her and her group are on are the ones doing the cheating. Am I just slowly riding along this shit to eventually to eventual heartbreak? Help me out, Bill, you sexy beast, you. <laughs> um, all right, well, there's a lot of variables here. Uh it's really the cheating girlfriend has put your girlfriend in a position um, where she's dragged her into her shit, you know, where now she has to choose between her friendship to her and her feelings about cheating. And um, I imagine it's her, her friend. She loves her and she doesn't want to blow up her life. Um I don't know. I think I think what really needs to happen here is you don't need to get involved. I think your girlfriend needs to go to her girlfriend and tell her the situation that her cheating has put herself in and that she needs to fucking end it with this other guy and grow up and start acting like a fucking adult because her piece of shit behavior is affecting your girlfriend's relationship. And where you never had trust issues, you now do. You know, I'm not saying that your, your, your thoughts that your current girlfriend will now cheat on you are unfounded. But there's two sides to loyalty, too, where, you know, you can, you'd help your friend move a body. You know, there's people like that. Like, you know, this cheater might be stringing your girlfriend along going, I know, I'm just confused right now. I'm sorry. I just need... I feel like I need something different, but I still love Mike, and I'm trying to... I'm just doing a little dick shopping. I'm sorry you had to see it. It's like the cock farmer's market, whatever the fuck she's saying, right? Um, fuck her friend. I feel bad for the other dude. What are you going to do? I would just sit down with your, your, your girlfriend and just be like, look, this is, what ha this is what has to go down, all right? You know, what I, whatever the fuck I just said. You need to go talk to your girlfriend and tell her that she needs to fucking clear up her situation uh, because it's affecting my relationship. Okay, grow up, break up with this other fucking guy, you know, and uh, get on with your life. That, that's what I would suggest. And, um, and, but I don't think you're wrong to now be looking at your girlfriend like, what the fuck? And uh, I never believe when a woman cries, when you call them out on shit. I never do because I don't believe the, I don't believe the crying as a rule. Because they can cry on cue like Meryl Streep, you know. Um, they just they just have access to that emotion, and uh, it automatically makes them the victim. It makes you feel like you're a bully. I think you're 100% right to feel the way you did. Uh, you might have gone at her a little too strong. Uh, I'm giving you an option. Uh, I hope it works out for you. Um, in the meantime, do you think you're going to marry this girl? Because if you don't, you're just wasting time. And this is a great fucking uh, jump off point to get the fuck out of it. You know, NFL football starts next month. That money you're spending on her going to the movies would look very nice with the NFL package. You got a lot of options here, sir. Um, good luck to you. Um, is this a trap? Oh, Billy boy. Oh, Danny boy, the lights, the lights are calling you. I love the podcast. I hope you can give me some perspective on this issue. I am in my early 30s, and I've been married for five years. My wife and I recently have been having a sexual resurgence in our relationship. After a big lull caused by the birth of our two kids and me putting on some extra weight, that's very honest, uh, we are back to fucking as much or more than we did when we first started dating. You know, that was coming off like really like uh, 
you were a mature man, and then you went right down to my level. Then after the birth of our two kids, there's been a sexual resurgent, and, uh, you know, I put on some extra weight, but uh, dropped a few pounds, and we're back to fucking as much as we used to. Um, here's a tip for married men. If you want more sex out of your wife, get your ass to the gym. It worked for me. There you go. There you go. Here's a guy practicing what I have preached for the six fucking years that I've been doing this podcast. By the way, next month is the six-year anniversary of me starting this podcast. Okay? So I am expecting some, um, I don't know what, some sort of congratulations. I should have done it yet last year when it was the five-year anniversary. Um, so this guy's going to the gym. That's right. He's getting the pecs going. He's fighting off the man tits, you know? He's, he's fucking not having that big uh, f- former fucking uh, rock star goddamn gut. You got to get rid of that shit, and you live longer. I read something one time or overheard in the bar, knowing, knowing me, that every extra pound of fat that you have is, is, is five miles of capillaries that your heart has to pump blood through. Just saying. Extra five pounds, 25 more miles of capillaries. So you can imagine if you're 30 pounds overweight, holy fucking shit, that's a that's a fucking road trip, 150 miles. You got to get it off. Um, that's why you always see little old ladies and little old men. You don't see jolly old fat 90-year-old guys. You don't. They're gone. You know? Other than Bill Russell, have you ever seen like a fucking 70-year-old seven-footer? There's a reason for that. Your heart has to fucking pump all the way down to the tippy toes. Okay. Also, my wife has been open and willing to do any manner manner of depraved sexual shit that I can think of. Jesus, dude. He goes, I am living the dream. I feel like I won the wife lottery. Well, I would say you do. If she's a great mother, too, that's phenomenal. So he goes, so here's the issue. Uh Uh-oh. Okay, I'm going to guess that she wants to bring somebody else into the bedroom. I'm going to guess... That you fucking open Pandora's box. And the way this is read, if it's another woman, you don't give a shit. I'm guessing she wants another dude. That's what I'm guessing. She wants a little rotisserie action there. A little Boston market. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> here we go. So here's the issue. Um, she has recently been saying that she thinks it would be really hot if I fucked another woman in front of her. Oh, oh, that went the, oh, an entirely different direction. She's clear that she doesn't want a threesome. She doesn't want to participate. She just wants to be there. Apparently, this is a fairly common fetish known as being a cuck queen. Did you spell it right? C-U-C-K queen. A cuck queen. All right, people, this is the first word I've learned the definition to since, uh, what is it, buggering, being a, 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 getting buggered? Anyways, he says, now I'm a guy. Now I'm a guy, so obviously I'm into variety, and the idea is intriguing. And like I said, she's willing to do basically anything I want to do in the bedroom. So it seems only fair that I would do what I can to fulfill her sexual fantasies. Still, this seems like a bad idea to me. Exactly. Great instinct, sir. I don't know what a reaction is going to be. I don't want to jeopardize my marriage for something like this. What do you think, Bill? Should I just go for it or listen to the voice in my head that says this is a bad idea? If I go for it, how would you suggest actually finding women, a woman who is open to the idea of being fucked in front of my wife? Thanks. All right. Here we go. Sir, you're 100% right. You can't fucking do this. And, and all the married guys out there who are like, Dude, what are you out of your fucking mind? I do that in a fucking second. Fucking second. I know this chick at the office. Not only she fucking banged me in front of the whole fucking office. Hey, love of my life. Look at me over here. I'm fucking banging. Right? All of those guys, those mouth-breathing morons, you know? who piss on the side of the road when there's a Wendy's with the fucking public bathroom right there. All of those guys, don't listen to them. Sir, you're 100% right. Some shit should just remain a fantasy. Okay? Um, Your parents. Okay? You have kids. Okay? And when that happens, there's a certain level 
of uh, maturity that you have to fucking have. Okay, you can't be walking around in the goddamn gimp outfit when at any second your fucking kids can open the fucking door to your bedroom. You know what I'm saying? And it's just going to be uh, and you're also introducing the chance of you catching a fucking venereal disease. OK, because first of all, any woman that's going to allow you to do that is going to be a freak on some fucking level. And evidently wearing a condom, you can still get herpes. I don't know how. It fucking parrot troops down on your ball bag. I have no idea, but evidently you can. All right. And I got to tell you, some fucking things, some doors should just remain closed. Um, I don't know how I would try to make up in that area. <clears throat> I was going to say, if she wanted to fuck another dude, then you could just act like you were another dude and say a bunch of different dude shit to her while you had her bent over and she's not looking at you so she could feel, you know. You don't maybe wear a different cologne. (laughs) But this whole, uh, you know, why don't you just get a blow-up doll and fuck that in front of her? Huh? You like that? It sounded the fucking... You like that shit? Oh, yeah. Take it. You whore. Right? Maybe you could do that. I don't know what to tell you, dude, but I'll tell you right now, your instinct to not do it is 100% correct. All right? You did hit the lottery with this woman. And this is another deal, dude. You could be gradually opening this shit up. You know, women are phenomenal masters of manipulation. Okay? This might be her roundabout way of saying, I want to fuck another guy. Okay? And what she's going to do is get you dirty first. Right? Just like politics. We can't have this guy get into the Oval Office unless we got something on him. She's doing, she might be doing that same thing. Now, this is just conspiracy theory. Don't look sideways at your wife as you're eating a bowl of fucking corn checks. I'm just throwing this shit out here, all right? This might be her roundabout way of fucking getting her to be able to have a fucking, all right, you get to fuck one. All right? <laughs> and not only does she got to fu- gonna fuck him, you got to sit there and watch it. You know? Don't do it. Do not introduce other fucking people into your relationship, all right? Your relationship, when it comes to sex, if it's going to fucking work, has to be a secret society. As far as my fucking skills go. My skill set, you know? I show up to the gym, people know what I do. (laughs) I got one mid-range jumper. That's all I'm taking. Everybody knows if you can stop it, you can stop it. That's what the fuck I'm coming with, all right? I don't even know how the fuck I went into that analogy. I was supposed to be making fun of me in the fucking bedroom. I have my little bag of tricks. That's all I got. Um, yeah. Okay. Now, here, here's something, because I've never done shit like that. I never went into that area of fucking freak week. I never did that. All right? Um, and I think if you are in a fucking healthy relationship, at some point, both men and women do want a variety. And at some point, it's going to come up, and you are going to talk about it. And be like, ah, you know, maybe we went to Vegas, maybe, yeah, but da, but da. and then in the end, you know, usually after you've banged and got that urge out of your system, you lay there and you just look at each other. Yeah, no, what the fuck are we think? We can't do that. It's fucking gross. We can't do we Like, it would totally, it's not, I'm not trying to judge people who do shit like that, but it would totally, it, you're, you know what it is? It's a house of cards and you're pulling one out way down near the foundation. It might stay up, but the whole thing might come down, and you got some kids in there. So let me ask you this. At the risk of turning this podcast into uh, a complete freak show, not freak show, just I don't know, because I I really don't judge people what the fuck they do. Um, Is there anybody out there that is married, has a couple of kids, and uh, has, has had this scenario? You know, has your wife been cool with it? Did you just bring some girl in and you fucking banged her? You know? Well, what exactly, what is the etiquette when you bang another woman in front of your wife? You know, is she just sitting there watching? You know, like she's watching a chess match? Are you allowed to throw us some looks like, huh? See that? You like that move there, sweetheart? (laughs) I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. I, I imagine that there's a bunch of rules. You're not allowed to do it missionary style. If you come, you have to look at me. Don't look at her. I mean, that, that scene, like, there's all these, like, 
You know what it is? It's like you're starting a new sport. It's kind of like MMA when it first started out, and you could punch, uppercut somebody in the balls and gouge their right. You could do whatever the fuck you wanted, and then they'd be like, all right, all right, we need some parameters here. Dana White came in and said, hey, no more fucking uppercuts to the undercarriage, no more eye gouging, no kicking in the face when the guy's on the ground, no punches to the back of the head. He made it civilized. So I imagine that they, there has to be some sort of, um, you know, civility to the fucking another woman. In front of your in front of your wife. Um, look, who's kidding who? That would be absolutely phenomenal. But uh, I I just I just couldn't imagine. You know. My woman that afterwards afterwards, and the woman leaves, and then I take a shower, right, and then we're sitting down. You know, eating spaghettios. Uh, like, I would so be praying that she started the conversation. If, that she was going like, yeah, I thought that was just, wow, I thought that was really, that was really neato. <laughs> <laughs> but the absolute fucking worst is if there would just be complete awkward silence, and then all of a sudden she starts tearing up, right? And now here you are going, but honey, you told me to do it. And the fucking kids are sitting there. I just didn't think, you know, I know it was my idea, but I just didn't think that you were going to enjoy it that much. You know, you don't come that fast with me. The fucking kids sitting there <laughs> looking like that kid in, in The Shining, you know, when he's fucking looking up with that red rum face. And I'll tell you right now, that would be a classic fucking 180. That could possibly happen because of uh, the delicacy of women's emotions. And I don't mean that like they're weaker or whatever. They're more tapped into them or whatever. And like I said, this also could be some fucking top shelf pimp shit that she's doing where she really wants to go fuck another guy. And she knows, well, the male ego, I can't come at him with this. You know, and if her mindset is like, hey, it's just sex, she's trying to get you on the same tape, uh, page. She has to get you fucking, she's got to get you dirty first. So um, I don't know. But like I said, if there's people out there who've done this shit, please email me. Because I'd, I'd love to know. Um, give me a quick scenario of what happened and then give me a long detailed it's not the act i get it the picture's been painted i want to know the aftermath i want to know afterwards like what the fu how to fuck i want to know what was the first topic that was discussed other than the fact that your wife had an outer body experience of as far as like the whole intercourse with you you know and what is she doing is she saving this up to think about later or is she literally engaging from across the fucking room? You know, basically doing the sexual version of the guy who goes to the game with his face painted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Great email, by the way, sir. Great fucking email. You want to bang another woman in front of your wife because that's what she's into? Well, God bless you. Put on a fucking j Gators, bitches wear jibbies. Put on a jimmy and have a good fucking time. Oh, you know what? I didn't answer his last one. He said, if I go for it, how would you suggest actually finding women who is open to the idea of being fucked in front of my wife? Yeah, I mean, you're going to you're gonna have to find somebody who's... Uh, I, would, I would try and find somebody who was really advanced in their career. You know? Like a lawyer. They, they have to have a certain level of job. I wouldn't go on fucking Craigslist and sign, find somebody who works at a Baskin Robbins who's down for doing something like that. That's, you know what I mean? You're trying to go out and find the cleanest person you can. And uh, I would just lay it out on the table, put it on the table, and I'd have everybody get fucking tested. And then I'd still wear a condom, and then I'd have at it. And then, you know, as far as the spaghetti -o conversation afterwards, that's on you. Um, surprise, we're getting a divorce. All right, here's a new story. All right. <clears throat> hey, Bill, I know you have 
you aren't a therapist, but I think I just want to talk to anyone at this point. So here goes. I've been married for just under four years to my wife, who I dated for four years prior to marriage. I love being married, and I've said that to anyone uh, that asks since day one. We own a nice house together. We have three dogs, pit bulls too, good man, and both make a decent living. I share everything in my life with my wife. Uh, when something makes me happy, she knows. When I'm upset about something, I tell her. Uh, throughout the course of our relationship, about once a year, she would suddenly, without warning, say she, she was unhappy and has been for months. Oh, God, here we go. Uh, she says she has discussions with her mom, who loves me and is the sweetest woman alive and close friends about the things that make her unhappy, but I never hear a word about it until it boils over and she floors me with how unhappy she is. Well, that's not fair. All right, we tried to work it out, though. Make changes. She would act like it was okay while bottling it up again. Once, once the lid goes on the bottle, there's no opening it again. Each and every time she calls the unhappiness state of the union meeting into session, I've always been completely honest in saying that I'm very happy with her. I love our jokes and honesty and enjoy, honestly enjoy spending time. Blah, 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 blah. Jesus Christ, dude, get to the fucking point. All right, last Wednesday. Here we go. We had a good night together. We went out for dinner and ice cream and laughed at about uh, blah, 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 blah. So I thought I'd come home the following night in general. Great mood. And she told me she had talked to her mom and a friend and that they recommended she talk to me. I was confused. Uh, da, 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 more shit about not being unhappy. Uh, anyways, I wanted anything to make her happy, but she told me she didn't think there was anything. It was very emotional as she finally mustered up the courage to say that we might need to get separated. I was floored and not in an, I'm an asshole husband that sits around, drinks beer and watches football with his buddy way. I love my wife. We are free. Okay, dude. Okay. 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 Uh, so the following day after much reluctance, I get her to agree to try marriage counseling so we can work out our happiness. Dude, I'm not giving you shit that this is. You're pouring your heart out because this shit just happened. I understand. But for the sake of the listeners, I got to fly through this. Um, I get to agree with her. I get to. I get her. Okay. So the following day. <clears throat> it's like Lord of the Rings here. After much reluctance, I get her to agree to try marriage counseling so we can work out her unhappiness. I was willing to do anything at this point. I immediately scheduled an appointment with a counselor and was looking forward to having someone neutral for us to talk to. Later that night, we were laying in bed, and I asked her if there was someone else in her life. She said, no. Yeah, dude. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Here we go. We just went over the waterfall, folks. Or we're, we, we, You know what it is? No, no. In this story, we, we're hearing the waterfall. And we just looked at the other person in the raft with a panic look on our face for that split second before we tried to desperately but futilely try and paddle the fucking thing over to the goddamn coast. Okay, here we go. We're going over. I got a feeling we're going over. Um, she said, no, there's no one else in my life. I asked her if she's ever been unfaithful in our relationship, relationship, and she adamantly said no again. Then she turned out the light and laid down to sleep. Five minutes later, she sat up and turned the light on. Oh, fuck. She told me she just lied to me and said that she had messed around with someone a year into our marriage. And he writes in capital letters, what, period, the, period, fuck, period. I probed her to tell me what messing around was. That's got to at least be a blowjob. <laughs> How did that happen? Ah, uh, fucking whore. Um, and after a minute of me guessing, her silence told me that she went down on a guy she works with. Oh! Swear to God I hadn't read this. Oh, if I was Verzi right now, dude, what I say? You heard me. You heard me. What the fuck? Oh, fucking creep. Um, I was furious and hurt, then furious again. She cried and cried and said she was sorry. We cried together. Dude, you're a bigger man than me. While I tried to wrap my head around how she could possibly have done that to me. I've had casual flirting with people over the years, but to act on something physically with someone other than your spouse is completely disgusting to me. The worst part is I love this woman more than anyone. She's been my, oh, here we go again. She's been my best friend for the last eight years. She knows everything about me. I want to hate her and make her sleep at her parents' house until we divorce, but all I want to do is yeah, be near her again. Yeah, dude, that's because, yeah, dude, she, she was in the hurry-up offense. That's what happened here. So now you're scampering trying to figure out what the fuck is going on, and, she, you know, she has the next three plays that she just called in the huddle. 
That's why this, this is why it sucks to be you right now. Um, one of my close friends tells me what I know is the right thing. He goes, let it go. Don't bother with counseling. What else has she done that you don't know about? How I can you never trust her again? Bill, is it possible for me to forgive my wife? Am I wasting my time? Um, also, I found out who this guy is, and I really wish I hadn't. Yeah, dude. Of course, all I wanted to sh- to do was show up at the job and beat the shit out of him like Ed Norton beats the blonde pretty boy up in Fight Club. He writes, I wanted to destroy something beautiful. My other thought is, since this guy also cheated on his girlfriend, who he's still with, um, my he did it with my wife, I threatened to tell his girlfriend what he'd done, but not actually do it. Yeah, you don't want to do that. That way, he'd live in fear of coming home and her knowing everything because I told her, or he would try to beat me to it and admit to it, hopefully ending his relationship and getting terminal cancer and AIDS. Terminal cancer and AIDS. And you know what? You're still being a gentleman. I still think that you're, you're handling this with class, wishing terminal cancer and AIDS on this guy. Um, I know you don't give a shit. Of course I give a shit. But not occupy, uh, but I've got to occupy my mind, so I, I thought I'd, I'd, I'd do it here. Yeah, dude, why would you think I don't give a shit? You know, I mean, I'm not a friend of yours, but you know what I mean? Give me a fucking break. This is horrific. Um, all right, your first question. Bill, is it possible for me to forgive my wife? Uh, eventually, you're going to have to, uh, and, or you're going to go on a fucking tear, and you're going to meet some really damaged fucking women, and they're going to reinforce everything that you've now found out about your wife. So you can't do that. You're going to go on a fucking uh, hate fuck pussy spree that is, yeah, you don't want to do that. Um, he said, am I wasting my time? Yeah, dude, it's over. She's not happy. She's not good at communicating. Um, she puts a lid on it, you know, until it boils over. This is the deal, dude. You know what? I, I This is going to kill you. All right? But let's go with the positive. You don't have any kids with her. Okay? You can just walk away. Okay? We had a problem. And there was, uh, there's nothing we can do. It's over. He didn't make it. You just fucking walk away. Just walk away. It's over. All right? Um, that's a good thing. All right? One thing, you've had a bunch of kids with this fucking, this person who, for whatever reason, couldn't say that they were, on, I, I don't think that she won't even wanted to fucking marry you. I think she ignores her feelings. She's actually having a fucking breakthrough right now while stomping all over your fucking heart. All right? Well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't Fuck her. Give me a break, dude. You fucking, you loved her with all your heart. You say her mother's a sweetheart. You got dogs. You like communicating, dude. You, you know something? You, you're like a, the fucking guy. You're the guy my girl wants me to be. Every fucking woman wants a guy like that. You know, guy who actually wants to be married. Guy who actually comes home and communicates. You know, a guy who gets along with the mom and all that type of shit. You're a family man, all right? Unfortunately, you know, you met the wrong person. So, Forget that, dude. All right? Forget it. Forget it. Fuck that. Fuck that. It's over. Walk away. Walk, walk away, dude. Give me a fucking baby. You know what you're talking about there? You're talking about, like, the, the amount of fucking shit she has to go through before she even learns how to just communicate her fucking emotions. And the frustration of that's going to mean every once in a while she's going to blow somebody at work. Are you wasting your time? Absolutely. fucking lutely Okay, absolutely. And as far as like going there and trying to fuck over that other guy, that other guy is he's already you don't need to fuck him over. He's fucking himself over. He's living that he's living a life of misery. That life is miserable to fuck around with the person that you're with, with somebody else. That is a miserable life. You know, I don't know. I think it's something that a lot of guys do, myself included, back in the day in my 20s, going into the 30s, trying to fucking, uh, you know, figure myself out. I lived that life, that whole fucking double. It's horrible. It's a fucking horrible thing. And in the end, I ended up alone, and I hurt a lot of people, and I was a complete piece of shit. So, and believe me, dude, it was miserable. It ended up me me on a fucking futon. <laughs> so, um, yeah, dude, you're, you're you know... Don't become a piece of shit now. Don't judge other women like that. Just fucking, you know. Yeah, get out of it.
get out of it and just know that it's going to be a fucking, uh, I don't know, it's going to be 100 yards of pain that you never fucking dealt with in your life, and you just got to go through it. And um, I, I would say the next time you get with somebody, uh, make you know, you're going to get serious with somebody, you make goddamn sure that they know how to fucking communicate. Because that's, that's a scary thing to get with a woman who doesn't know how to communicate because that's something that they're supposed to teach us how to do, you know, in a way. They make you better because you're like, oh, 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 I can just say, uh, no, I don't feel like doing that without fucking punching the wall. You know, they do that so to settle you down. If you get with some psycho and she can't settle you down, I mean, you, she's, uh, she's damaged goods to uh, wife leaving. Oh, geez. Bill, quick question. I turned 42 years old today. And after 17 years of marriage, my wife announced she wants a divorce on your birthday. God damn it. You know what that is? That's some cold lotion right there. That is some cold lotion. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's an inside joke between me and Nia. Um, my gut has been telling me for months um, she's been cheating on me. I got to tell you what cold lotion is now. Cold lotion is when somebody is going to do something right and then they fuck it up. It basically started one day when uh, Nia wanted me to put lotion on her back and I didn't rub it in my hand so it was cold. So I put it on her back. So I was doing this loving thing that was gonna was good for her skin, but I did it in a way that made it awful. All right? So the reason why that would be right here, this would be cold lotion, is because she probably got him a birthday gift. Happy birthday to... And then, yeah, I want a divorce. <laughs> You know, she got him a fucking chainsaw, you know, or a goddamn hockey jersey, whatever the fuck he wanted, baked him a cake, and then kicked him right in his fucking twat. Um, all right. He said, my gut has been telling me that she's been cheating on me for months. She's packed up and left the house, but many of her things are still here. She's coming by next week to pick them up. Here's my dilemma. Her dildo slash vibrator is amongst the items she's left behind and will be coming back to get. So do I coat it with hot sauce or not? Thanks. Um, uh, shit. Do I have time to answer this one? All right. How, how do I fucking answer this? You know what? A woman would do that to a guy. Okay? But this is the thing. A guy would just take it. You know? A woman would do something like that to a guy. Like, what, 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 what the fuck would she do? She'd fucking, you know, I don't know, pour water on your computer. What is what is the female equivalent to putting hot sauce on a fucking vibrator? I don't know. What do you jerk off with, sir? <laughs> a woman would definitely do some shit like that. All right. If you were fucking cheating on her and on your and you broke up with her on her birthday. I mean, you want to talk about hell hath no fury. Hey, women, you know, what? why don't you guys write in? Hey, ladies, write in and tell me what you would do. To your fucking uh, a guy who did that to you after you dedicated 17 years of your life to them. All right? You found out they were fucking cheating on you. Well, you didn't find out, but you had a good feeling. Then they broke up with you um, on your birthday. Um, what would you do? I don't know what they would do, but this is the thing. You don't want to do that shit. Don't, don't do that shit because it's, I mean, you, you're going to go to divorce court. She's already probably going to try to take you to the fucking cleaners. Uh, provided, you know, she makes more money. She probably, the, if she doesn't make more money than you, um, don't do it. Just know this. Just know this, okay? Whoever she's going to is now shacking up with a cheating cunt, all right? And you sound like you're a good dude, you know? You're devastated, although, you know, it's a little crazy to want to put hot sauce on it. Um, I don't know. The way I look at it, dude, the sooner she comes back, and gets all of her shit out of, out of your life, the better. You're 42 years old, dude. I'm telling you. Hit the gym. P90X. Fucking insanity. Whatever you got to do. Get yourself ripped up. And look better than you ever fucking looked in your life. All right? And then what I would do if I was your age, I'd go to one of those fucking dating sites. All right? Go to one of those dating sites and get yourself fucking some hot, good girl, 10 fucking years younger than you. All right? Do that instead of putting hot sauce on a fucking dildo. All right, dude, you're above that. Please tell me you're better than that. All right? This fucking twat doesn't want to be with you. Fuck her. Fuck her. And letting some other fucking asshole who goes around banging somebody's fucking wife 
Those two pieces of shit, they should get together. They should get married. They'll have a baby. You know what? They'll probably be a fucking banker. <laughs> All right? Fuck her. Don't do that. Don't, don't stoop to her level. Let her leave. You want to leave? Go ahead and leave. All right? And then one day she's going to see you and be like, what the fuck was I thinking? And you're going to be like, it's too late. It's too late for you. She's younger. She's hotter. She's a sweetheart. And she doesn't suck another dick in the relationship. You filthy pirate whore. All right? There you go. Okay. Jesus, everybody giving me shit. Remember last week when I called that woman a douchebag? Remember the douchebag of the week last week? Because she was giving me shit. Once again, a female, surprise, surprise, was giving me shit that when I read the underrated, overrated, or the questions people have, I wouldn't say what sex they were. And she somehow found out a way to kind of, I don't know, make me look like I was some chauvinist that I guess she felt if it was a good question, I credited a guy. And, uh, you know, it's a free podcast. All right? Stop being so fucking cunty. So she became douchebag of the week. So evidently she didn't like it. And what does she do? She sends me an email. Here's the email she sends me. Uh, Bill, it's nice that you named me douchebag of the week. I don't really give a shit because I always mean what I write. I don't even know what that means because I always mean what I write. Oh, really? What are the rest of us just faking it? We're just joking around? But not you. You're so fucking serious. So anyways, evidently this psycho. This is a new segment. This is psych. I can't, I can't figure out if this is uh, love letter of the week or psycho of the week. I don't know. You guys name it. I don't give a shit. So anyway, she goes, I don't really give a shit because I always mean what I write. And it seems you're just talking shit about two things that I wrote that seemed bitchy. No, I was talking about your entire email. Don't try to knock it down. All right, continue here. She goes, call me a cunt, but I really don't give a fuck. You've read a lot of my comments previously and agreed with them or had a good response to them. I'm literally fixing her sentences because she doesn't know how to write here. But it's nice that you uh, will consider telling the gender of the person who, uh, who the comments are from. And I know you have a shitload of people who listen to your podcast, but I got you some more since my friends who heard the podcast thought it was fucking hilarious, and then they started listening to you. So you really should be thanking me. Isn't this just typical? This is just all going to be woman bashing this week. Isn't this just typical of a fucking female? You know what I mean? She's getting something every week, every week that is free, and she still found a way to bitch about it. Okay? And then when I call her out for being a douchebag, now she's actually trying to make me feel guilty. You know, I just, you know, you call me a douchebag, you know, whatever. I mean, just, even though I got a whole bunch of friends to listen to, I mean, probably should be thanking me, but, you know, that's okay. Shut up. Just sh I swear to God. Why, why can't you slap women? You know, back in the day, how great did that feel? You know, you have on the wife beater the wind blowing through your armpit hair as you just fucking <laughs> crack. I know it's evil. I don't give a fuck. Fuck all you guys. I don't give a shit. This is the rest of her email, okay, before you think I'm an asshole. This is what she wrote. This is actually so psychotic. It's hilarious. She writes, and yeah, I do know that the name shows up on the email even if I don't sign it, but you just make it seem like you that much of a retard to notice. That's literally what she wrote. And then she wrote, you're over 40 and have the vocabulary of a seventh grader. Your is spelt Y-O-U-R. All right, for all you morons out there, your Y-O-U-R is possessive, meaning like that's your shirt. Okay, if you're saying you're over 40, that's you are. Okay, so that means if you're going to say you're, it's an apostrophe. Y-O-U apostrophe R-E. So if you're a dumb fuck like this woman, if you don't know, the next time you go to write your, just stop and see if you are would still fit. All right, like you're over 40. You are over 40. Okay, right there, you know you got to use the apostrophe. as as opposed to saying, you're over 40. So what is over? Do I own over? You dumb fuck. But I do have the vocabulary of a seventh grader. But you know something? You have the fucking vocabulary of a third grader. All right? You're over 40. And you have the vocabulary of a seventh grader. You can't recognize real words. How hilarious is this? And she's misspelling stuff. You stutter when you read, and I hope your dog outlives you. <laughs> And you die lonely because of your inability to commit and therefore never achieve the comedic fame of the great George Carlin. 
So Simon says, go fuck yourself, since it sounds like you have major brain damage. All right. Sweetheart, I'm really going to try to help you out here. Okay, if you hope that my dog outlives me, and then you say, and then I die lonely. Okay, if I'm going to die before my dog, mathematically, the fucking dog is still going to be there. So how am I going to be lonely? You know? The dog would have to die first or run away. So what you should say is, I hope your dog outlives you, then runs away, and then you die by yourself, as opposed to saying, I hope your dog outlives you and you die lonely. No, I would die before my dog and be sitting there licking my face in my last few pathetic moments. And then evidently, because of my inability to commit to a relationship, I'll never achieve the comedic fame of George Carlin. Oh, that totally makes sense. It has nothing to do with the fact that I wasn't blessed with his gifts as a comedian. You know, all you have to do to be as good as George Carlin is just commit to a relationship to some psycho fucking chick like you. All right? Lady, these are podcasts. These are jokes. When I call somebody a douchebag, I'm just fucking around. So don't take it seriously. But if you want to, you and your friends can go fuck yourselves and go listen to another podcast. All right? Stop trying to threaten me. Like you're going to take podcast listeners away. I don't give a shit. This is free. What are you going to take away advertising dollars from me? I don't give a fuck. Fuck you and your friends. I hope you're all listening it together. Fuck all of you. Look around the room. Look into each one of your eyes. I'm saying fuck all of you. You know what's funny? is your friends are probably laughing at you right now. Going, you know what? She is, she is kind of a cunt. She really is like that. She does have a tendency. I know I shouldn't use that word, but I'm serious. She is. She can be real cunty sometimes. And she has a tendency to exaggerate things that aren't really happening. In fact, <laughs> Yes. Oh, let's get into this shitstorm. Last week, I did a, uh, somebody asked me a question about why when a guy does something um, for his girlfriend, why is it never enough? And one of the, one of the problems that uh, I've had and that this guy had last week is you, you try to plan something that both you and your girlfriend can enjoy as your night out. And evidently, women have a problem when you pick something for the both of you to do that you as a guy will also enjoy. Evidently, from what I'm reading from these fucking psycho emails that I got this week, (laughs) is that if it's not 100% about them, if you don't literally make a Rose Bowl fucking float, sit them on it and then drag it down the street with your fucking teeth, they feel that you got too much an enjoyment out of the evening. So basically the evening was, it was really your evening. It was real. Look, look at the fucking wedding day. You stand in it like an idiot and she makes this grand entrance. She gets a one of a kind dress and you, you get a tuxedo that some fucking drunk's going to wear at a 15 year anniversary for a bowling alley the next fucking week. You know what I mean? All right. Let's listen to what the twats had to say this week. Um, all right. Here's this, this, this wonderful girl. And I say she's wonderful because she actually admitted that she was a psycho because I actually emailed her and asked her, why do you only respond to male, female shit? And she sort of in her own little cute way admitted that she was a psycho, so I can't hate her. But anyways, this is her email. Hey, Bill, I love the clueless email questions from your male listeners. That's always a great way, by the way, to get the other people to listen to what you have to say. Right out of the gate, just start insulting them and talking down to them. Um, He said the, uh, the guy was asking, why is it never enough to please a woman since he admit he, um, and then she's referring to his email. He, she says, since he admits he isn't home a lot, I'm guessing his wife slash girlfriend is doing all the dirty work for him. His laundry, cleaning, cooking, picking up after him, etc. All right, let's stop right there. She's doing all the dirty work. Let me ask you guys a question. Would you rather sit home doing laundry? First of all, laundry is the most overrated fucking chore ever. If you have laundry in your fucking apartment, what, what, that takes all of a minute to load the fucking thing in. And if you're not colorblind, it probably takes 45 seconds to load it in. And then you go back to watching The Price is Right. Cleaning, cooking, picking up after him. I would rather do that than do what this other guy's doing. This other guy is working like 60 hours a fucking week. Okay, let's, let's move it. She's already made this assumption. Okay, then she, the, then she wants him to spend some, some time with him. And he comes up with something that he wanted to do. Just like when you took your girlfriend on that drive, all we heard about was the love story between you and the car. You were more excited about the car than anything. It was like you were on a date with the car and your girlfriend just came along for the ride. Listen back 
to even the tone in your voice when you were talking about it. It's like you were talking about another woman. All right, you know something? I could sit around for 20 years trying to come up with the perfect paragraph to talk how insanely jealous and psychotic women are. Can you be- they are they're jealous about an inanimate object. She's talking about a car. It's almost like you were talking about another woman. Lady, you are out of your fucking mind. You're out of your fucking mind. And you're totally ignoring the fact that I took her out to dinner. I took her out to lunch. I took her up for a ride up to Pacific Coast Highway. People fly out here as a vacation to do that. A lot of couples do that. And I'll tell you right now, they don't do it in a Corvette convertible. They do it in like a fucking, whatever, a Buick Century. Really? I mean, it literally is never enough. You're actually proving this guy's point. This guy's point. So she says, my husband does the same damn thing. I'm like, what can we do for fun today slash tonight? And the only thing he can come up with are things that interest him. Well, what can you come up with? Can you come up with anything that doesn't interest yourself, you selfish cunt? You're doing the exact same fucking thing. And it's unbelievably selfish for you to sit here and, and, and have like a, a, a day that's for both of you and it has to be 100% about you. Because what, you did some laundry, you lazy fuck? You're bas- you know what women are? They're basically, they're like adult children. That's what they are. They never get beyond, they're like juveniles. They're adults, but they still want to be treated like they're not of age. It's, it's just fucking boggles my goddamn mind. Um, she goes, I'd rather not do anything at all. I think it's selfish and, igno- and obnoxious that everything we do has to have his interests before mine. So everything that they do should have your interests before his? You, you're, you know, these fucking broads. Out, see, this is, this is my thing. This is why you should, you should never get married. You should never be in a fucking relationship. You shouldn't. Because they just constantly fucking hack away at your goddamn knees. And their idea of a relationship is that you do everything that they want to do. And right now, they're sitting there shaking their heads. They're going, no, no. Even the girl wrote that's probably saying no. And there's a bunch of other women going like, I'm not like that. I'm not like that. I went to a ping pong convention. They always come up with some stupid ass fucking example. And at the end of the fucking day, you have to do everything that they do. You have to do what the fuck they want to do or else they get mad. Okay? And that, my friend, is when jerking off comes into play. Because when you really break it down, what's the worst thing that they're going to do to you? They're not going to fuck you for a few days. Okay? And I got to be honest with you. Once you rub one out, who gives a fuck? And you have to have that clarity when your nuts are full. Do you know what I mean? Am I sounding like a fucking maniac here? I know I am. I know I am, but... You, you got you got to hear what, the, what this what this uh, this other woman wrote, and of course I don't have it in front of me because I'm an idiot. Where the fuck is it? All right, um, I am writing to comment on the why it is never enough discussion on your last episode. Episode. I'll start by saying that the guy that wrote in, and to a slightly lesser extent, you come off as total douches. Let me explain my view of the writer's the writer's situation. Oh, I guess the guy who sent the email. Uh, and yes, I am one of those manipulative, selfish creatures known as women. Um, yeah, you are. What, you called yourself out on it? Now, was, or on, was I supposed to like read that and be like, wow, I really am too harsh on women? See, you're like trying to manipulate me with your fucking bullshit already. Okay, here we go. Um, I don't remember the names, so I'll call him Bob and his wife Sally. Bob neglects Sally. A huge fuck up on Bob's part. Now, let's, let's get back to the, to the detail here. He's neglecting her. What is he? Is he out at the bar chasing other women? This guy is out working his fucking ass off. This is the thing that women don't understand. What they don't understand is I, I, this is maybe I'm being a moron again or a douche, as this lady says. I think a lot of women don't understand what it takes to be successful. What it takes is sacrifice. And in your 20s, you have to work your fucking ass off. That's what I did for five years. My first five years in this fucking business, I had no girlfriend, I had no social life, I had nothing. All I was doing shows and, and fucking rubbing one out. That's what the fuck I did every goddamn day. I went to work. I, I was writing jokes at work. And at night, I got in a piece of shit car. And I would sometimes drive to another fucking state. And you know why I had no girlfriend during that time? Because none of them could understand what I had to do to get where I am today. All of them were giving me shit. You're doing stand-up again tonight? Do you realize how many Richard Pryor's 
are fucking working at a Home Depot or Jimi Hendrix because they hooked up with the wrong fucking twat who talked them out of their goddamn dream because they didn't want to they didn't want to hear it because they said you needed some sort of responsibility. This fucking guy is doing the right thing and she's calling him selfish. He's at work busting his ass trying to get ahead. So when he's 40, he's not a fucking loser. And he has, see, and they all want the fucking house. They all want it fucking yesterday, but they don't want to get through the bullshit of it. They don't want to go through the bullshit of it where you, you actually have to uh, not see him for a little while because he's out working. So anyways, huge fuck up on his part, part to be uh, busting his goddamn ass. So he says, Bob decides to make it up to her by taking her to see your live show. She says, which is awesome. And a dinner, which is pretty standard. This is how out of control women are. She's getting a free fucking meal. And they're so spoiled as a sex that she describes a free fucking meal as standard. Do you know what I have to do as a man to get a free meal? I have to like win like a fucking, like a radio contest. You know, I got to call up this radio station and imitate the local sports guy. And I have to beat out all these other fucking guys who are... I haven't had a free meal since I was like eight years old. My parents took me to McDonald's or whatever, like maybe 13, 14. Women are so fucking spoiled that this guy is busting his ass at work. That's viewed as selfish. He's buying this girl a free dinner, and it's viewed as standard. They're out of their fucking mind. So anyway, she goes, Sally basically tells her friends, who may or may not know that Bob has been fucking up. Once again, Bob is fucking up because he's busting his ass at work. So when they're 40, they're going to be on easy street. He's fucking up right now. Um, these same bitches who make you fucking, you know, not chase your dream, leave you when you're 38 because you're a fucking loser. Right? All right. I love generalizing. It really gets these twats, cunt hairs in a fucking... I, didn't wanna, I can't even finish that sentence. That was so evil. All right, let's, pl- <laughs> let's plow ahead. Um who may or may not know that Bob has been fucking up, that this night out is not what she had in mind, but she is taking what she can get, playing the victim. Ah, oh, the poor baby. She's taking what she got a free meal. She's just taking what she can get. And she's getting a show to come out to my show, one of the best fucking comedians in the country. You like that? I'm talking shit. It's football Sunday. And I'm a, plus I'm reading the Ric Flair. <laughs> 